Today on Grub Stakers, we're discussing the lifestyles of the rich and famous with very special guest, Matt Chrisman. So get ready because it's the Jeffrey Epstein episode. Get lost, please. Thank you. I can tell you that every job has its ups and downs, and a union can't change that fact. I mean, it is the magic elixir of our of our age and of all ages. What it does for prostate cancer is amazing. You get $200 million profit and you didn't have to pay any tax. Isn't that true? Listen, it's, it's, is that true or not? It's, yes or it no? It is. You do not pay a profit when someone, a, a, a tax when someone Maybe makes you sell assets. Maybe that would be for you to become Secretary of Treasury so you didn't have to pay the tax there. Oh. <laughs> Hello, welcome back again to Grub Stakers, the podcast about billionaires. I'm Sean P. McCarthy. I'm here. I'm joined as always by my good friends. Yogi Polywell. Andy Palmer. Steve Jeffries. And uh, this week we, we got a really special episode and we got a really special guest and uh, we're, we're, there's no one else we would rather have here with us to explore the life of one Jeffrey Epstein. We are, <laughs> we are joined from, uh, from my favorite podcast, Chapo Trap House, Matt Christman is here. Uh, good to be here, guys. Hi, thanks for the invite. Love talking Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt, we want to thank you for agreeing to come and gaze into the abyss with us. Yeah. He's, he, you guys said, hey, you guys want to talk about a billionaire? And I'm like, I guess. And they say, we haven't done Epstein yet. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be uh, an honor to share a, uh unmarked grave with you. <laughs> <laughs> And like, you know, so many listeners will be familiar with kind of the broad strokes of the Jeffrey Epstein case. He's a powerful either billionaire or multimillionaire. We don't know. But he has heavy political and business connections. He receives an extremely lenient plea for just countless counts of child molestation, rape, trafficking. Uh, And then the plea just happens to immunize, quote, any potential co-conspirators, unquote. Uh, and there, you know, and then there's been a big effort to kind of shine light on what happened here recently, both through the press and through civil suits. And so I think, like, within the next five to ten years, either a bunch of new information comes out that proves, you know, Pizzagate is real, or this case totally disappears and gets buried forever, which also proves Pizzagate is real. <laughs> So, you know, it's it's just something to watch, but it, it is kind of horrifying to just do research about. Well, yeah, like looking into this guy, it got to the point where I would not be surprised if he ordered Stanley Kubrick murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Make it eyes wide shut. Like that's every single thing like that I find out, every new thing I find out about this guy it just gets weirder and weirder. Mm-hmm. It's uh, and I already knew he was like a serial rapist, but then each new detail it gets more insane. Right, and so you know Virginia Roberts is is one of the identified people, but there's also Jane Doe's that have made these sworn affidavits saying essentially Epstein uh, trafficked them out to businessmen, politicians, other powerful people. He asked them to you know gather information on these people. Police, when they raided his home in Palm Beach, found you know hitting cameras, hitting recording devices. So it's it's Some not that they installed themselves. Yes, it's not hard to stretch the imagination to say. Uh, yeah, and Epstein in fact told Virginia Roberts that he was doing this quote because he wanted to have something over these people it's it's not hard to imagine that there's maybe videotape of people who just don't want that out there mm-hmm. makes sense mm-hmm. the other thing that they found when they t- searched his house was one of the girls uh high school uh um report cards right yes so that's nice wow. <laughs> that he keeps those things <laughs> report cards yeah what an odd victory piece yeah well Should you know I... he likes to keep track on them make sure <laughs> that they're they're doing good <laughs> yeah yeah he really he he offers to help them get into NYU. Really? Yeah. yeah. Your grades have really fallen since you started coming to give me massages. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get into the current institute <laughs> with this Eddie. Is, is anything going Eddie. on with your personal life? <laughs> <laughs> you should talk to the guidance counselor. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this, and this is a federal non-prosecution agreement. We'll kind of, we'll circle back to it. Actually, um, one thing real quick is that yeah. w- one interesting thing is like part of this all fell apart because of a guidance counselor. Um, really? Yeah. There's this girl, Mary, where, uh, she started, uh, having trouble at school and then she talked to a guidance counselor and they found like hundreds of dollars in her wallet. Oh. And eventually that led them to Epstein and it's Palm beach. They found money in her wallet. Like well, like what? Yeah, it I, fell I, out of her hand and money I, through. I, I don't know the details of like why they were going through a wallet, but it was, yeah. Huh. 
And it's just something where, so yeah, like, you know, there are these, uh, these other women who are like allegedly sex slaves. One of them is alleged that Epstein, I think he, Epstein himself said that he like bought this woman from her parents, I think in Estonia or somewhere in Eastern Europe when she was 14. But these like, you know, uh, young adult women who were in the house with him who would lead these girls upstairs and, and you know, it's all horrible. But essentially, you know, there were those co-conspirators who were uh, immunized as part of this federal non-prosecution agreement. But again, uh, according to the Miami Herald, long piece, uh, quote, any potential co-conspirators were also immunized as part of this this federal thing. And then, of course, you have, as many people are aware, Bill Clinton is on the flight logs having taken 26 trips on this Lolita Express. Carpooling. That's, yes. that's nothing crazy. They're yeah. just hanging out, this, you know? This, this plane, uh, including to, you know, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's little St. James Island. Uh, apparently, on some of these trips, he, he ditched his secret service detail for some of them which it doesn't prove anything but Lolita Express was by the way a name given to it by the locals in I believe the Bahamas Mm -hmm. the Uh, the US Virgin Islands US Virgin Islands Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess presumably because they saw so many young women coming out of this plane that that became a nickname amongst the locals Uh, the fact that he uh, painted it uh, yellow and black I think was (laughs) a little on the nose (laughs) Uh, and so there was like, um, we did a, for research for this, actually, James Patterson is, uh, you know, speaking of billionaires, the second richest author in the world. He's almost more of a brand at this point. You know, he just kind of throws his name on things that, uh, he co-authors with people according to like one, um, uh, linguist, like the majority of his books are not actually written by him. They're written by his co-authors. <laughs> um, but, uh, James Patterson, he holds the Guinness record for number one New York times bestsellers. Uh, again, second richest off author after J.K. Rowling. But the important thing is he wrote this book, or John Connolly and Tim Malloy wrote this book. <laughs> I think uh, he wrote the first chapter because it's fucking awful. Yes. <laughs> and then the rest of it sounds like it, it, it like comes across as written by real journalists. Right. But the first one, it's it, it reads like whoever was writing it was like, here's the story of a child rapist and the details of how he got caught. But I should sex it up. <laughs> And so it's got these awful phrases, like he describes like the victim's apple round butt. Oh no! Mm. Um, and it it just horrific. don't get horny when you're describing. <laughs> <certain things. laughs> yeah. I think that's just literary rule number one. Yeah, yeah. Apple round. That's how. That's the words that they use. Apple round butt cheeks. That's Boots weird. with the fur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the song came out right before he started writing. He also describes uh, a victim. Uh, when Epstein walks in shirtless as uh, being ripped like the jocks at her school. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But so this book, um, uh, it it gives kind of an overview of the case, but it is just kind of curious because uh, some people might be aware, James Patterson, who again writes this book on Jeffrey Epstein, would go on to write the book, co-write the book, The President is Missing with Bill Clinton, and also, incidentally, he co-wrote a children's book, uh, quote, Give Please a Chance with Bill O'Reilly in 2016. <laughs> Give uh, Please a Chance? Yes. That's terrible. But it is interesting. The book, just kind of like uh, the uh, James Patterson book, Filthy Rich, it kind of brushes over Bill Clinton. He's mentioned briefly. Like, there's kind of like one sentence, which is, um, uh, Bi- uh, I mean, there's a couple, but one of them is um, Bill Clinton, Kevin Spacey, and Chris Tucker all flew to Africa on Jeffrey Epstein's plane with Jeffrey Epstein. And that's just left there as a sentence with no follow-up. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> that is the one flight I would like to get the recording. <laughs> <laughs> what did they talk about, those three? He was dressed up like Fifth Element. <laughs> Chris Tucker talking to a 13-year-old Estonian. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> I really don't. Um, but so, yes. Uh, so, you know, I don't know why James Patterson would write a book about Jeffrey Epstein and then go on to write a book with Bill Clinton. But, you know, in, in fairness, given James Patterson's reputation, it is very possible he has not actually read this book. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. sure, yeah. Well, the 26 flights were left out of his book. Yes, uh, they did not mention. There was That's the thing. It's like Chris Tucker one time went to Africa. It's like, all right, he doesn't necessarily know what's going on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> come on, 26 times, get mm-hmm. out of here. Yeah. Christ. Yeah, and uh, for her part, Virginia Roberts has said, uh, and again, other Jane Does have said this, Jeffrey Epstein was receiving two or three, quote, massages a day. And again, a massage was code word for molesting, abusing young children. 
Uh, he was receiving two or three of these a day, and, and uh, Virginia Roberts has said essentially anyone who spent any significant amount of time with, Jeff- with Jeffrey Epstein would be aware of what's going on. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to get around these things. But I guess we should just kind of go through uh, the case and uh, what we know of Jeffrey Epstein's biography, and then we can just kind of return to the the larger questions here. But, you know, in addition to, like, Jane Doe testimony from, like, Virginia Roberts, or Jane Doe testimony, Virginia Roberts, there's also, you know, like, housekeepers at Jeffrey Epstein's house uh, in Palm Beach. This was uh, between 2001 and 2006. They testified that, you know, he would have these two or three massages a day. Afterwards, they would often be asked to clean dirty sex toys and these kinds of things, you know, children coming in and out of the house. Um, And Epstein, of course, like... uh, Throughout this uh, Florida investigation, he put private detectives on both the police investigating him, the states and federal attorneys. Uh, he put them on witnesses. You know, there'd be cars tailing them. and The victims' families were tailed by cars to the point where uh, other drivers would be run off the road by the private investigators tailing victims' parents. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people would run these oh. plates, and, of course, they would come up as private investigators. Mm-hmm. So, again, you know, lots of power, lots of influence, but I I guess we can just kind of start from the beginning here, which is what we know about Jeffrey Epstein. Essentially, he was born in 1953 in Brooklyn. On his mother's side, his parents were Lithuanian refugees. They fled Hitler. Um, His father, uh, his grandparents on his father's side came from from Russia. His father grew up in Crown Heights. Uh, Jeff's grandparents apparently owned, like, a house wrecking company. Hmm. I guess they would knock down houses. True. And uh, but his dad, Jeffrey Epstein's dad, worked for the city parks department, New York City. Uh, Jeffrey grows up on Coney Island. He graduates from Lafayette High School in 1969, which is in Gravesend, South Brooklyn. And uh, if you go to the Wikipedia page Mm -hmm. for Lafayette High School, would you like to guess who is not listed as a notable (laughs) alumni? (laughs) Uh, Sandy Koufax, Larry King, Steve Sharippa are all on there on Nutter Notable Alumni, but there is one peculiar absence. <laughs> oh, Larry King went there. Yeah. Um, I can also think of another famous person who grew up uh, in uh, South Brooklyn Jewish community and portrayed it as being in Coney Island in the movie Annie Hall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, interesting. Um, after Jeffrey Epstein was released in, from prison, uh, people who attended a dinner party uh, at his apartment in New York, this is again after he's been publicly outed right, as a right. sex predator, uh, Woody Allen, Chelsea Handler, Charlie Rose, <laughs> Katie Couric... <laughs> George Stephanopoulos. <laughs> and all come together for a huge party. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, these One are, last big bash. <laughs> these are the people who hold the powerful accountable. Yeah, they really grilled him at the dinner. Yeah, <laughs> right, sure. right, right. We couldn't see it. That's yeah, like, where did this swordfish come from? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so, you know, so he graduates Lafayette High School. He's kind of recognized as a math prodigy from a young age. Jeffrey Epstein is. Um, he briefly attends Cooper Union. He attends NYU, but he leaves without a degree. But despite not... Drops ha- out? Yeah, he drops out. Despite not having a degree, in 1973, he's able to get a job teaching math and physics at uh, Dalton Academy, which is like an elite one percenter K-12 private school. <laughs> So he's teaching math and physics. It's on the Upper East Side. It's still in existence today, and there's still, like, you know, New York Times articles about how stressed, you know, the the elites are about getting their children into it for, you know. He was the inspiration for the police song, Don't Stand So Close to Me. (laughs) Um, but so basically he gets this job teaching math and physics at Dalton in 1973. And this is uh, essentially his connection to the 1%. This is what gives him the networking right. in that he needs to make himself very wealthy. Um, uh, you know, he's, he grows up, let's say middle class, but either through the son or the daughter, he meets a guy named, uh, Alan C. Greenberg, who was the CEO of Bear Stearns from 1978 to 1993. I'm pretty sure he's the guy who in, uh, the big short is the one who's on stage talking about how great Bear Stearns stock is while it collapses. <laughs> <laughs> like I looked up his picture and uh, it's like, I'm pretty sure the actor is portraying that guy. Yes. In 1976, Bear Stearns hires Jeffrey Epstein and then is cursed by history forever. (laughs) (laughs) 
but yes, yeah, so Jeffrey Epstein is hired uh, by Bear Stearns as an option trader in 1976. Uh, he later works in the special products division, which is basically advising wealthy clients on tax avoidance strategies. And uh, as been you know mentioned on this podcast and other places, you know when in 1980 when Reagan came in, the highest ta- marginal tax rate was 70 percent. So essentially, tax avoidance was a very lucrative thing. You right. could charge people a lot if you could say, "Hey, pay me this," and you'll still pay less than what you would pay the federal government. So he works on tax avoidance, uh, and he's actually made a limited partner in Bear Stearns in uh, 1980, which is, again, extremely lucrative. But just a year later, he leaves Bear Stearns. And then this is kind of a a weird story where we don't know all the details, but there's an allegation that uh, Epstein might have been involved in an insider trade here. (gasps) What? Uh, Yes, no. we are going to nail Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> for insider trading on this podcast. Uh, but so so basically, um, there's a in in 1981. I uh, thought he was going to be the one billionaire who made all of his money legitimately <laughs> <laughs> through hard work and gumption. Yeah, and he Boot just drums. got brought down by his uh, his vice. That's right. It was completely unrelated. Mm-hmm. So it was because of social democracy that he got his first job in tax avoidance strategy <laughs> the problem the with the dims gave him his start the, the so. problem the real problem with the swedish model <laughs> <laughs> um but so basically what happens in uh in march uh 1981 is uh the seagram company places a bid for saint joe minerals corp it's a hostile takeover and uh th- you know th- they talk about this in like the book den of thieves and, and all this other stuff but essentially like throughout the 80s and i would imagine continuing to today uh, insider trading was endemic in Wall Street, where anyone who had knowledge of a deal would either have their own Cayman Islands account and they would trade on that deal, or they would just, you know, give their friend a tip and say, "Hey, buy this stock, and we'll split the profits later." You know. So basically, what happens here is um, right after this hostile takeover is launched, the SEC starts investigating, and Jeffrey Epstein has to admit, "Yeah, I lent my friend twenty thousand dollars to buy stock, but I didn't know what he would do with it." You know. <laughs> And um, I just gave him 20 grand in a note. What he did with that, that was his own accord. Right. And so the SEC doesn't charge anybody, but they do ask Epstein if he was like asked to like not say anything about potentially other Bear Stearns people were involved in this insider trade, if his bonus was dependent on it. And, you know, he, of course, says no, but he walks away with about $100,000 bonus, you know, after like not ratting on anybody. Right, right. So we don't know. But that's just kind of the end of his time at, at Bear Stearns, and it doesn't really make sense that he would leave right after making limited partner, which is, of course, again, extremely lucrative mm. to go from, like, a salaried employee to a partner at one of these firms. But that's basically the story of Jeffrey Epstein's at Bear Stearns. He goes and he meets, he sets up, like, what's called International Assets Group, where he claims to help billionaires with tax avoidance strategies, um, but he also says in a deposition he spends 80% of his time assisting people recover fr- uh, stolen money from fraudulent brokers and lawyers. Uh, so we don't really know how well he's actually doing throughout this time. But he does meet this guy, Stephen Hoffenberg. And Stephen Hoffenberg is the CEO and founder of Towers Financial. And Towers Financial was a company that would essentially it would buy debts like unpaid medical bills at discount and then harass debtors for full repayment. You know, yeah. What year is this? <laughs> uh, he meets him in 1987. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, these, these classic uh, uh, productive uses of <laughs> right. the resources of the no, economy. Uh, yes. So we're doing a lot of um, background. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm going to just break this up for a second. Of course. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. Yes, I do. Could you please give us your name? Jeffrey Epstein. Is it true, sir, that... Um, you have what's been described as an egg-shaped penis. Form, vague, and definite, and I'm going to give you the first warning, Mr. Cuban, that these types You'd think of he'd at least plead the fifth. Not only argumentative, oh, his, his lawyer's doing the plea. Oh, that's what he's doing there? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Epstein, if you continue with this type of question, I'll adjourn the deposition. <laughs> Sir, according to the police department's probable cause affidavit, uh, one witness described your penis is oval shaped and claim when erect it was thick towards the bottom but was thin and small towards the head portion and called it egg shaped those are not my words i apologize but as mr as mr critton has stated that this is a i'm willing to continue 
I'm taking that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that as an, oh. as an admission yeah. of egg shaped dick. Yeah. <laughs> I like how the the SVU based on this was worse. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly as interesting. Yeah, there's shaped. definitely an SVU, and in the um, audio book from the James Patterson thing, you can hear the guy uh, who's reading it trying uh-huh. to decide whether he wants to do an ice. Uh, Iced tea impression. <laughs> <laughs> Man, egg shaped. I don't think there's anything else worse than you can call it someone else's dick. It's deformed and apparently he can't get a full erection. They call the penises egg shaped. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of them egg shaped dicks. <laughs> uh, like a traffic cone <laughs> that blew a gasket. <laughs> I didn't in the know, factory. I didn't know Mike Tyson was on SVU. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't watch any SVU. I can't. Yeah, but so, uh, and basically, like, I mean, and, and to just kind of, like, finish the background here, essentially, we're, we're wondering about, nobody really knows how Epstein got his money. I, uh, but uh, essentially, this guy is Stephen Hoffenberg. He has this, you know. Well, here's, here's a description uh, from the book. What did he tell you he does for a living? What he specifically told me when I asked him the first time was, oh, I'm a brain scientist. And I said, what the fuck is a brain scientist? I was like, that's not a real job. Tell me the truth. But anyway, his explanation was, it's my job to know how people's brains work. And I said, whatever the fuck that means, whatever. That's from the audiobook? That's from the audiobook. Yeah, that's just like the type of thing that he would tell his victims. Yeah, I'm a brain scientist. Uh, I'm a, I'm just I, I just know how people work. He's a brain chef. He's yeah. a brain genius. He's a brain genius. Yeah. I mean that's that's kind of also why I think that he made a lot of his money uh, from Swindling extortion. People, yeah. Uh, I mean also I think he's just kind of like the PizzaGate pimp. Is he? Uh, I, I mean a lot of his his financial dealings get murkier after uh, Bear Stearns. Right. And I think, but that's also around the time when he clearly uh, really starts branching out on his pedophilia Mm -hmm. and also pimping out children to powerful people. Like he he will explicitly tell uh, women, and this has come from the deposition, to uh, come back to him and explain what um, the people that, uh, what these guys would want. Uh, what they liked to do in bed, all these kinds of things. Like he would want all the details of that, and he would keep like meticulous lists of names, and he would brag that he has connections with powerful people. Mm. And uh, other people who knew him said he didn't know shit about investing; that he would hire people to do it. And so my guess is that a lot of uh, the money he made was basically he would get a lot of powerful people on the line for um or just basically get a lot of blackmail material yeah he'd learn and, how people like to fuck and then tell them that hey i'll tell people that this is how you like to fuck unless you give me money or not even money uh tips yeah, yeah. let me give me stuff that i can do insider trading with right, right. right. Yeah. yeah 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 i mean and that's like something we've we've talked about is essentially like the business model of a lot of wall street or, or whatever else is just leveraging connections to government and powerful people which of course gives you information about what's about to happen that you can trade on which is valuable yeah but yeah like just on that point like forbes wrote some article which was essentially like jeffrey epstein is not a billionaire because that's that's, <laughs> that's their the racket. only thing that matters yeah. Yeah. Their racket. we have the <laughs> list he's not on it <laughs> Um, but so basically they were saying like as part of discovery in this, these court cases, the, the lawyers for the victims tried to find out Jeffrey Epstein's net worth, you know, of course, to get damages. And Jeffrey Epstein's lawyers would come back and all they would admit was like it was above nine figures, you know, I think was their quote. And again, like he was. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, no worries. He, he uh, Epstein was at least involved in like a tax avoidance strategy. So, of course, a lot of his money's offshore. But the the point was essentially like even if he's not like technically a billionaire, I'm sure the the photographs that he have would have a market value close <laughs> yeah, yeah. to one right, billion right, dollars. Right. Yeah, if that came, if that lot came up at Sotheby's, <laughs> <laughs> there'd be a hell of a bidding war. <laughs> People well, laundering money through the photographs. <laughs> well, a lot of the names that came out came out because his uh, I guess they're called housemen, mm-hmm. uh, just like head butler. Uh, when he left Jeffrey, uh, stopped working for Jeffrey Epstein, 
he took a bunch of documents with names on them and he said it was just to make sure he wouldn't disappear. <laughs> and then no one wanted to hire him uh, after they found out, after uh, Epstein got um, convicted and then you have Jeffrey Epstein's uh, house man on your resume. No one wanted to hire him. So he tried, yeah. he tried to sell the names um, to a lawyer involved in a lawsuit for $50,000 and... Uh, it eventually just turned out that it, by not giving those names to police, he was withholding evidence and he went to jail. But the names got out and they included... The papers also included the names, addresses, and phone numbers of famous individuals. Henry Kissinger, Mick Jagger, Dustin Hoffman, Ray Fiennes, David Koch, Ted Kennedy, Donald Trump, Bill Richardson, Bill Clinton, and former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak among them. Bill Richardson's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, this is, like, just kind of, like, the addresses that he had. Though, apparently, like, the Bill Clinton one had, like, 20 different pieces of contact information <laughs> just so he could, like, reach him at any time. Wow. And, you know, like, and it is just kind of something where uh, we, we, we talked about this. Um, we, we did uh, an episode on, like, David Koch and the Koch brothers, and, mm -hmm. like, it's some grand scheme of things. You know, maybe they're more evil, like, they're essentially d doing a mass extinction event <laughs> and, you know, covering it up and these kinds of things. But... Like, researching Epstein, it's so much more visceral and horrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you find out that David Koch is in his address book, and you're like, yeah, oh, right, he's doing that, right. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. But interesting note on that is that, yeah, so his housekeeper, Epstein's housekeeper, takes this address book as evidence uh, so he doesn't disappear. And another running theme in the book is how many people seem to think they're going to disappear <laughs> if, uh, if they testify against him. The thing but, about, I just want to say, the yeah, thing about uh, the Koch brothers and, and uh, Epstein and how, you know, one of them is this flamboyant pedophile and the other one you just think of as this quiet psycho, mm -hmm. but who also might be doing it. Uh, the uh, basically it boils the question. There's two terms that they th use to describe billionaires: eccentric and reclusive. <laughs> <laughs> and it basically boils down to how flagrant their pedophilia is. <laughs> like, do they have their own private island where they do it, or is there a subterranean vault on their ranch? Do they do they invite people over, or do they keep it to themselves? And that's who the difference between reclusive and eccentric. Yeah. Um, but so uh, we, we mentioned, so this housekeeper who stole the address book, he was like... Uh, the house man? That guy? Yeah, the house man. He was charged by the FBI with extortion because he was trying to get like 50000 for this uh, and withholding it from the FBI because he didn't tell them about it in the original investigation. He serves 18 months, which is longer <laughs> longer than Jeffrey Epstein. Of course. <laughs> and he had uh, to be in jail the whole time. Yes. And uh, whereas Epstein was allowed to go home... On a work yeah, release. Yeah. Six days a week. He couldn't go to his regular job and do insider trading and then come back. <laughs> yeah. right. Six days a week? Six and that week. was against the explicit rules of the sheriff's department that did not allow sex offenders to get furloughed. <laughs> <laughs> not, and I, I mean, he, they were explicit. That's, that was a thing you could do for certain crimes, but the crimes he was convicted of were ones you were not allowed to do it with, but he did it anyway for wow. some reason. Somehow. Don't know. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Oversight. <laughs> yeah, the whole, the whole conviction uh, process is so so shady um it's it it that like the chief of police i guess there were no videos of him uh and so he conducted it the way that you're supposed to conduct a um a, a case where you have a serial uh rapist and then the state attorney was uh, at first he was pretty gung-ho until he heard the name and <laughs> he immediately started backing down and um so i guess uh sorry i'm, I'm getting ahead of uh what's what's actually going on so uh essentially what happened is epstein he had this house in palm beach florida and what he would do is he would uh have young women or girls he would have underage girls come and then he would pay them 200 dollars for a quote massage where he would basically make them get naked and uh, he would jerk off to all kinds of disgusting things. And then he uh, would also say that they could make a hundred dollars or he would pay them $200 and then an extra hundred dollars for each thing that they would do. And he would also say that there's money in it for you. If you can bring me new girls. Cool. So he's Recru recruiting with them. Yeah. He's right. recruiting. Mm. And he's also it's like Amway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He would instruct them that they should be girls who um, are inexperienced and are uh, going to need the $200 and are unlikely to go to the authorities. Um, 
eventually this all came crashing down. I wonder if this has any relation to the economic system we live under. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you do the math, because uh, I was I was I was running the numbers in my head, and if you're a millionaire mm-hmm. and you pay someone uh, two hundred dollars, that is the equivalent of having a thousand dollars in the bank and paying someone dimes. Mm-hmm. If you're a billionaire and you pay someone two hundred dollars, that's fractions of thousands of cents to you. That's how much he's paying. So he's paying them the the money. He's, he's literally them, nickeling and diming them. Uh, <laughs> fractions of fractions of nickels and dimes, and it, the reason he's paying these amounts is so that they'll come back to him. Like mm-hmm. he's not paying them so much right. that they're like one and done. Uh, and of course, the reason he got caught is because he was doing this with hundreds of girls. Oh yeah, it's insane. Um, and mm-hmm. so uh, the police do a very thorough investigation. They get several witnesses. Um, Epstein catches went halfway through the investigation and uh, starts basically doing all these things that we mentioned with the private investigators. Um, and then once it gets to the state attorney, that's when things get really weird because uh, the state attorney kind of starts backing down to the point where the chief of police contacts the FBI. Jim Acosta gets involved. Um, and Alex Acosta uh, is the current oh. labor secretary <laughs> under Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Alex Acosta. Sorry. <laughs> Jim's brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I am not qualified. Uh, that's, that's why they think Trump's coming after the pedophiles <laughs> <laughs> because of his abuse of Jim Acosta. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, and then the state attorney at this time is a guy named Barry Kreishner. Interestingly enough, was accused in 1992 of groping a subordinate. Um, but he's like a par- unrelated. I'm yes, sure. it tries to get uh, Epstein off with even a misdemeanor. But um, but uh, but we're kind of jumping ahead. I did just want to say two other things, and then we 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 can kind of get into this. Um, so one other thing we mentioned this um, the the house manager uh, served 18 months longer than Epstein just unrelated um, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with these people Matt but um, Cher- uh, Sherry Jacobus was apparently a columnist for USA Today and the Hill and she tweeted at Michael Capo- Caputo or something she tweeted at him in J- July 2018 quote are your daughters ugly like you or can Trump use them at the Epstein parties so they can survive when you're broke bitter alone and in prison for treason question mark and she tweeted this at him and she was fired by usa today and the hill and i just wanted to to also highlight that um alan dershowitz has not been fired by the hill <laughs> <laughs> so in addition to the the manager doing more time just men- <laughs> trolling people with epstein stuff is also a, a greater offense right. <laughs> but um i, I did just want to like the finish the the background stuff and then we we, we finish out with the the, the horrible uh, inevitable conclusion of all this basically uh epstein in 87 he gets hired by this guy steven hoffenberg uh hoffenberg pays him about twenty five thousand a month for consulting uh according to uh, the uh, uh, vanity fair article they engage in a variety of financial schemes uh including price manipulations uh like straw investing where um uh, uh epstein will make investments with money from undisclosed swiss accounts you know no criminal charges but in 1995 hoffenberg pleads guilty to a 460 million dollar Ponzi scheme. He's sentenced to 19 years in prison, and he actually tells a a journalist, I believe in the James Patterson book, essentially why Epstein didn't go to prison for this, is you'll have to ask the U.S. attorney, and he alleges that um, the assistant U.S. attorney, Robert Gold, kept the investigation away from Epstein until the statute of limitations ran out, uh, and Epstein had previously helped the U.S. attorney recover money. We, We don't know how true that all is, but the important thing is in 1989, Epstein meets probably the most important person in his life, his billionaire, uh, Leslie Wexner. Leslie Wexner is the founder of L Brands, which owns Victoria's Secret, as well as Bath and Body Works. Uh, Epstein begins managing his money, 1989. Uh, Leslie Wexner buys Epstein his $13 million NYC home, which is apparently one of the largest private residences in Manhattan. Wow. Um, there's like a weird story of um, Epstein. Let's go there after this. Yeah. So they're like, uh, the, uh, according to Vanity Fair, Wexner trusts Epstein so completely that he has assigned to him the power of fiduciary over all of his private trusts and foundations. Um, you know, so he's like totally in control of his money. They go everywhere together. There's a story in this book that's really weird where Leslie Wexner gets married and then uh, he goes to Epstein to sign the, uh, the prenuptial and Epstein gets him to sign it on the uh, bare chest of a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model <laughs> as a way of being like, hey, this is what you're missing right, out right. when you're getting married, you know, just this kind of weird shit. But 
the important thing here is that it's through um, Leslie Wexner as ownership of Victoria's Secret that uh, Jeffrey Epstein gets access to essentially hiring power or power within the Victoria's Secret catalog. Like, as far as I've been able to tell, the earliest accusation is 1997. He's accused of groping a woman in a California hotel who he said, I can get you a job with the Victoria's Secret catalog. And essentially there. And... Um, Though, you know, Leslie Wexner, of course, took all of the pictures of Epstein out of his home after 2008. (laughs) So I'm sure he has no involvement there. And then, like, uh, the other thing that happens is he meets uh, Jeslene Maxwell. Do you you familiar with Robert Maxwell, uh, Matt? No, I don't think so. So Robert Maxwell, like, I guess maybe British listeners might be more familiar. He's kind of infamous over there. But so basically he was a, um, a, a, a billionaire media baron in the United Kingdom. His body washed up in 1991. Uh, <laughs> he, f- <laughs> he, he found out, he, he fell, he either fell or jumped or was pushed off his yacht, essentially. He was a, a, a major media baron in the United Kingdom. But after he died, it came out that he had looted hundreds of millions of pounds from his employees' pensions oh, wow. and used them to pump up the stock price in his empire, which, of course, you know, goes back to him. So this is how Jeslene Maxwell, his daughter, becomes rich, is, you know, stealing hundreds of millions out right, of employees' right. pensions. But the important thing is after her father's dies, she moves in 1991 to NYC. She briefly becomes lovers with Jeffrey Epstein. And then, according to these sworn affidavits, starts procuring young girls for him. Like Victoria Roberts, we've mentioned. In, uh, in Epstein's words, she's upgraded to his best friend. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so there's like a Vanity Fair article that was written before all this came out. And if you read it with hindsight, it's extremely creepy. <laughs> yeah. Because, yes, he gives that quote there. Yeah, and in the Vanity Fair article, um, uh, the Patterson book goes over this. Um, they do, the original article had details of Epstein's, um, his, his abuse uh, from what, they, what was known in 2003. Then Epstein showed up at Vanity Fair offices, uh, more or less threatened them, and they had to uh, cut all of that stuff from the article. And you could see if, when you read the article... That it's a long article. The, every section is, you know, several several right, paragraphs right. long, and then the one about uh, Jeffrey Epstein's, you know, quote affinity for young women is only two paragraphs long. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, so it's like through Jeslyn Maxwell. It's two paragraphs long. Like he left that in e- even after cussing them out. Uh, I mean, they cut out all the stuff that was. Um, it was just like he likes younger women. Oh wow! Yeah. But uh, through Je- gross. through Jeslyn Maxwell, um, uh, Jeffrey Epstein meets the British royal family, which is this is where the Lyndon LaRouche oh, conspiracy wow. theory comes in, that the British family is directing all of this. <laughs> that's uh, like, uh, yeah, that's like when Superman and Batman formed the <laughs> Justice League. There, oh man, that's like that's like that's like when Cal L finds Earth's yellow sun and gains his powers, <laughs> getting next to the fucking British royal family. Ugh. Those people know how to do pedophilia, yeah. folks. <laughs> like a thousand years straight. <laughs> They've never stopped. It's, 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 uh, it's Shepherd's Pie Gate <laughs> <laughs> from the Norman Conquest onward. Uh, but yeah, so Prince Andrew would, of course, be accused of participating in this. But um, Jeslyn Maxwell, is she's also friends with Donald Trump. This is how Jeffrey Epstein gets access to Mar-a-Lago. And we've mentioned Virginia Roberts. She was age 15. She was working as a changing room assistant at Mar-a-Lago. And there are uh, videos with Prince Andrew with his arm around Virginia Roberts. Really? It's yeah. a child. As, yeah. It's horrifying. Yeah. Um, but so uh, Jeslyn Maxwell essentially meets her in this changing room, and she offers to train her as a massage therapist, which, of course, means, according to Virginia Roberts' sworn affidavit, uh, Jeslyn Maxwell brings her to Jeffrey Epstein's house where they both sexually assault her. Um, and this continues for, I believe, three years. She essentially ends up being trafficked by Epstein, uh, according to her sworn testimony, or sworn affidavit, was made to have sex with Prince Andrew and Alan Dershowitz, allegedly. I don't know. He's litigious about that one. I don't know. I'm. He's threatening to sue everybody, but I don't think he wants a discovery phase. Come on. I think he's full of shit on that. Yeah. I, I think he's there, so much has come out now that he can't sue everybody. Mm-hmm. That's another thing, yeah. Who are you going to sue, dude? Everyone knows. <laughs> um, I have to say, though, that, yes. that, uh, that anybody 
the the idea that that Trump had was involved in this is, just seems very very far fetched. <laughs> <laughs> All you really have is the quote where he explicitly says that he is aware that Jeffrey Epstein uh, likes young girls. Yes, <laughs> and you have the fact that he founded a. A beauty pageant for the explicit purpose of doing Porky's style hijinks <laughs> right, right. and oogling underage girls while they were tra- changing, which he just bragged about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think he's the kind of guy who would do anything. No, like that. Yeah, I think he's actually t- conducting the secret investigation of all the pedophiles, <laughs> and they're all going to go to jail soon. And like, so what the fuck happened in like the 2016 election? There was like a Jane Doe who was alleging that when she was 13, right. yes. Guess, through Donald Trump that she was abused or through Epstein she was abused by Trump but and then she was going to have a press conference and didn't show up to it and then kind of withdrew her accusations and then I haven't heard anything about it since then Uh, yeah one of the weirdest things about that is that when Trump got elected the, the, all the pedophilia stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. the judge explicitly said because he's the president you should seek a settlement which is that's weird. That's bad judging. <laughs> it's, he's just uh, just offering some advice there. <laughs> he's busy. He's got a lot on his plate. The master deal maker cuts another one. <laughs> There's so many deals to be made. <laughs> he's in prime deal making position. And you know what he was? Because remember, he finally settled the fucking Trump University right, lawsuit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Get him, get him while he's still looking to to get things out of the headlines. I guess out of court settlement, NDA, deal, deal, yep. deal. <laughs> Boom! So many deals, <laughs> folks. We're making so many deals. No one's going to talk about uh, all the sh- horrible shit we do. <laughs> but Jeslyn Maxwell is again kind of a horrifying uh, uh, person. She's like a high class Carla Homolka. Yeah. So yes, and she attends Chelsea Clinton's wedding in 2010, <laughs> which is so <laughs> weird. Again, this is. After- I love how we have all these these two. Parties who are opposed to one another <laughs> and certainly are not just a one giant, disgusting fucking ruling class like in the movie Society, <laughs> just getting together in a room where their bodies lose definition and they come into one giant, sort of disgusting Jabba the Hut like <laughs> slithering blob and then they just feed young children through a chute into the blob and the blob just absorbs them in one end and then shoots them out covered in mucus and traumatized for life out of the other and then when they're done they just go into different parts again and then go on TV and yell about how each other is a pedophile (laughs) I love that it's great I love the two party system we have I mean, uh, Epstein, he's he's it's a, a testament film. to bipartisanship. Like Ken Starr <laughs> yeah, was seriously. one of his uh, <laughs> one of his defense attorneys, <laughs> and uh, Ken, who uh, you know, he took down Bill Clinton and also uh, had as a protege at Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> yes, that's true. We need a return to bipartisanship in Washington D.C. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the good old days. But yeah, it's like it's, it's like a weird thing where it's like so he uh, she attends Chelsea Clinton's wedding in 2010. There's allegations again um, unsubstantiated that she was the conduit through which Epstein continued to communicate with the Clintons. But it is just fucking weird where it's like okay, you're at Chelsea Clinton's wedding. Did Chelsea Clinton invite you? Did Bill or Hillary invite you? I mean, you know, what's going on? Epstein of course had been a, a donor to the Clintons before that became politically incorrect to accept his money. Um <laughs> But and then Jeslyn Maxwell is that she's like on some fa- she's founded some foundation that's all about saving the oceans. Yeah, she's she got did, a TEDx. Yeah, she did a TEDx talk in 2014. Couldn't get booked on regular TED. <laughs> she's it's the foundation to clean the ocean of all the bodies that they've dropped <laughs> from, from the bay of uh, flying over hel- airplanes over the years. <laughs> A lot of trash has been yeah. ending up in the ocean. We gotta from, clean it up yeah. the trash from from St. <laughs> James Island, yeah. from Eastern <laughs> Europe. Um, but so you know, and, and this kind of like brings us to the thing where again, this is where in the '90s where these allegations start. Jeslyn Maxwell is is allegedly recruiting for Jeffrey Epstein, including at in, Mar-a-Lago. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right. Yes. And so this Palm Beach case, which we mentioned earlier, essentially the Palm Beach PD find that from 2001 to 2006, they identify 47 minors uh, molested and raped at his Palm Beach mansion. Uh, two, two of them said that they were actually like physically raped. But and, the, and keep in mind, this is Epstein has several properties in Manhattan. Yes, this is just Palm island. Beach. This is just Palm Beach. Right. And these are just the ones that the law enforcement was able to confirm. Mm-hmm. 
And so this this uh, the state attorney Barry Kreischer, Kreischer he stop, stops returning calls from the detectives. You know they get suspicious as Which we is, mentioned. You know, what you do as a state attorney right, is right. you stop uh, returning calls from the guy investigating the case you're prosecuting. Uh, so he kicks it up to, or he tr- the d- detective tries to get the FBI involved. Alex Acosta, again, current labor secretary, then U.S. attorney in charge, uh, gives Jeffrey Epstein almost immediately this non-prosecution agreement. There's these the emails between the prosecution and Acosta, which are essentially saying, "Hey, how do we? Let's make sure to keep this out of the press." You know, we'll yeah, because make sure- there's one thing that that. Uh- the politically ambitious prosecutors hate is <laughs> high-profile <laughs> sexual assault <laughs> uh, uh, cases involving uh, high-profile characters. Like yes. that's the kind of thing that you don't want to have your hands <laughs> right, on right. if you want to build a reputation for yourself as tough on crime and mm-hmm. become, uh, you know, higher up in the political, <laughs> uh, become attorney general or something. You don't want that. No, you got to keep that stuff quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. thing about this is, is that this case, like. So they had all this. He was dead to rights. They could of have course. put him in, under the prison for the rest of his life. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they pl- made a plea deal with him, which, and you look at the way that it was negotiated, was basically everything, the, the entire uh, settlement was, was uh, the, the terms of it were presented by the, the defense attorneys. Mm-hmm. And the prosecution just said, okay, you got a deal. And when that happens, usually you get something. And traditionally, in a case like this, you get leniency in exchange for naming your co-conspirators right, right. in this case it really looks like they gave him immunity to not name any of his <laughs> co-conspirators <laughs> like that was the quid pro quo was we'll give you a sweetheart deal in exchange for you not releasing any of these tapes or not telling anybody about any of the people who you had in your place i mean what uh, it's the only thing that makes sense it's the only explanation <laughs> yeah. for the, these guys just deciding to go Insanely easy, violating federal law oh, yes. to give him a deal when they had him fucking done for. It was not like this was a, an iffy case that they might that they were like, well, we don't want to roll the dice. We want to make sure we get him. He was done for, and then they say, not only you're okay, we're not gonna we're gonna give you this light sentence, but anybody unnamed, yes, anybody who might have done anything associated with you who we don't even know. Uh, is preemptively uh, uh, immune. And that is just, that's so comically, obviously crooked right. that it really r- tells you that, oh yeah, the only thing that makes sense here, not, you don't have to be conspiracy theory, you don't have to think there's dungeons and pizza restaurants, is that he had information about incredibly powerful people mm-hmm. and those people had more sway over the prosecutors and the, and the FBI than any concept of the law or even concern for public opinion would. Yep. Right, and like, and the other thing is Alex Acosta, again, current, Trump's current labor secretary, was appointed by George W. Bush. He's supposedly a Republican U.S. attorney investigating a prominent Democrat donor. Yeah. This, like, like, this, is, this is catnip. Right. This is the kind of thing that makes your career, and for some reason, they can't touch it. It's a hot potato. There was also, a, um, in the uh, Patterson book, an unnamed uh, Democratic politician who contacted the chief of police telling him to back off repeatedly <laughs> what? to the point where the chief of police had to say, uh, this is illegal. Stop <laughs> it. Oh my God. An anonymous Democrat politician who kept talking about how he feels the chief of police is pain. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> could the uh, prosecutors themselves be a part of the Epstein ring? You think, uh, <laughs> Like, I mean, like, that to me makes the most sense. Like, oh, if we nail this guy for everything he knows, we're going to get fucked, too. So we might as well say, hey, you can't name anyone as well. I mean, like, that's the thing is, what's so staring, disturbing about it is it doesn't, they don't have to. Like, like right. uh, power is, is, is display, distributed in such a way that your career, if you care about your career, you, they have an ability to determine your actions regardless of your personal culpability you know like these guys they might not have anything on them they don't have to have a blackmail file on you they just have to know that you want to get another better job and look at fucking acosta he's a goddamn in the cabinet now it worked for him he made the right call from a career (laughs) perspective he made the correct rational self-interested bayesian choice or whatever the hell Mm -hmm. to to do that and 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 regardless of whether he he was trying to cover something up that he had something to do with or he just wanted to keep advancing uh that's all it took and so like that's what's that's the thing is not only do you have all these prosecutors and cops either looking the other way or 
we're cutting this deal. But all the people who knew about it while it was happening, all the people who worked with and around Epstein, who knew it was happening and didn't have anything to do with it, weren't, weren't part of the, of the Yellow King circle, didn't, <laughs> didn't have a passport to Carcosa. Yeah. <laughs> all you need, you don't even need, that's the thing. It's you, all you need is at the very top, an, the, the, all you need is the, the perversions to be concentrated high enough at the top that all you need to keep that uh, secret is not some cascading level of like Cthulhu worship. You just need people wanting to More. be ambitious mm-hmm. and want to want want their careers to get better, and then they, that will do the rest. Yeah, that's pretty horrifying. And and like so, and just in what uh, on Matt was saying on like, did they get anything out of this? As far as like what we know, this Miami Herald long piece. The only thing they found was essentially, and this is a weird thing that I learned, is Jeffrey Epstein was a key federal witness in the only criminal prosecution they tried against Wall Street. They tried to indict two uh, senior Bear Stearns executives. They were eventually found not guilty, and then nobody else was held accountable. And apparently, Jeffrey Epstein was a federal witness in this. So. You know, the immunity was worth it because we put all those bankers in jail <laughs> with his testimony. Yeah. No, that definitely feels like a post facto thing. Right. If everyone looks to... into this, yeah. we have to have some explanation for why we gave him this deal. And it's like, well, these guys, they, you know, they would have still not gone to jail if it hadn't been for him. It was, <laughs> it was incredible testimony. And so just like other stuff from the trial, Alan Dershowitz was, of course, uh, one of Epstein's attorneys, along with Ken Starr. Allegedly. Alan Dershowitz um, submits the MySpace quizzes of some of the victims as evidence. (laughs) Really? uh, Yeah. uh, Apparently, Alan Dershowitz showed that when one of the victims, MySpaces, under the the quiz she wrote, ever drank? Yes. Ever smoked pot? Yeah. Uh, Ever skinny dipped? (laughs) Yeah. God. (laughs) And then the fucking uh, state attorney, they call a grand jury, which is apparently like not usual in these kinds of cases, according to the Patterson book. But the state attorney or the lawyers grill the victim about her MySpace page in this fucking uh, 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 deposition. And it's just really weird where, again, this is a child trafficking victim. You know, being her MySpace grill. Yeah, because because she wrote, "Yes, I've smoked right. pot on my fucking." We've MySpace noticed stuff page. in your top eight that's really yeah. suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, hey, have, you, have you talked to Tom? <laughs> <laughs> Did Tom want you to do anything? Mm-hmm. Wow, Tom gives your character a thumbs down. <laughs> the other one, the other really really unusual prosecutorial behavior, and this wasn't even in Florida, is that after epstein does his incredibly light sentence where he got to be furloughed six days a week and Mm -hmm. just spend nights in the jail not even the prison in the fucking jail Mm -hmm. and he got back to new york and he had to register as a sex offender um he then with the balls of stone tries to appeal his uh his status that he's argue that he doesn't have to get it renewed and who argues on his behalf in front of the court is one of cy vance's manhattan (laughs) ada's The fucking ADA says, you know, come on, judge, like, he's not going to, he's fine. Look at him. Wow. Like, where the fuck does that come from? Like, whoa. And of course, Cy Vance, famous for looking the other way for Weinstein and mm-hmm. fucking mm-hmm. Ivanka and Jared, just mm-hmm. whose job, he is just the, the Renfield for every fucking crooked piece of shit on that island. Right. Yeah. Unless you're like a homeless guy with a job. Oh, yeah. Then, then you're, you're five fucked. years in Rikers yeah. Island. Yeah. Tough on crime. Yeah. 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 You got a gravity knife, buddy. You're done. <laughs> yeah, you're a serial rapist, but you know, you, you don't jump the turnstile. Yeah. And just like one other anecdote from this Patterson book about the justice system in Florida. In 2013, a Florida man got 10-year mandatory minimum for sexting with a cop pretending to be a (laughs) 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 15-year-old. And again, you know, this is like... Oh, my God. Likely hundreds of cases of just child rape and abuse. And, you know... um, well, I mean, the real lesson here is if you have those kind of proclivities, uh, you know, start day trading. <laughs> you know, build up, build up a nest egg, uh, get your license, get your broker's yeah. license, come to, come here. Yeah. Come get in Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Make and friends it, and videotape yeah, uh, exactly. what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go mm-hmm. to parties. Just keep it under wraps until you hit the seven-figure uh, net worth minimum, and then yeah. you can start start going to town. I like to think the feds heard that he worked at Bear Stearns and then drafted the non-prosecution agreement out of habit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But so I I guess it just like the time we have left, there there is like one other case that's, or one other part of this story that's pretty horrifying that I just wanted to kind of go through. Just one? Well, (laughs) of what we know. Are are we not going to have time to talk about uh, Deep Dershowitz? 
Uh, Pizza? We, we might have a, f- a couple Maybe. minutes, but but I do. <laughs> I do just want to ta- talk about. <laughs> Last night I just texted Sean. Hey Sean. Hey Sean. Hey Sean. Deep dish pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so John Luke Brunel was a, um, a modeling scout and owner of a modeling agency. He was in 1988 accused in a 60 Minutes program of uh, drugging and raping multiple models. He's been accused by models of again drugging their drinks, raping them, and you know it's a shady fucking guy. Uh, he opens a modeling agency called Karen, uh, K A. R I N Epstein in 2004 or 2005 invests one to two million dollars in it and gets him to change the name to MC2 modeling agency mm-hmm. as in E equals MC squared you know physics and he fucking loves science <laughs> <laughs> that is <Yeah>. true <laughs> <laughs> he does he's given tons of money yeah. to Harvard and stuff for their for their neuro- neurology or neuro- neuroscience departments and stuff he, yeah, he fucking loves science research. no here's yeah. here's that's here's, where that's I mean that's what Steve Pinker would tell you about why he was on the plane huh, well we were just talking about science yeah. here's here's where it gets really fucked up is one of the guys that he brought on the plane to his island is uh murray gelman uh who is a nobel prize winning physicist and also the guy who coined the term quarks to mm-hmm. describe the subatomic particles and mm-hmm. is the father of quantum chromodynamics he's tied up in the epstein thing and was like a good friend of him and talked about how great it was that epstein always had these beautiful women around him all the time he was picking his brain to figure out a way that they could they could use like the hadron collider to create women of negative age <laughs> <laughs> also, nice. yes, he is the I wanna, father of hadrons as a concept. Is there a negative fourteen-year-old that I could, <laughs> I could possibly be involved in, a, in, in, in the string dimension or something? That'd be nice. You go to the the I fucking love science Facebook page and you post the photo of right, uh, right. Stephen Hawking and Jeffrey Epstein's submarine and just see if anybody notices. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein loves physics. Uh, all right, so. The the point here is that they set up this MC2 modeling agency either 2004 or 2005 and then By according the way, we we tried to find videos apparently there used to, Epstein used to have videos where he describes theoretical physics we tried to find these videos they're not online if anymore. our listeners can find them please send them to yeah. us <laughs> would you describe the universe as egg shaped <laughs> <laughs> if a 14 year old girl is in a box with an egg shaped penis uh, you don't know if she's molested until you open it. <laughs> So basically, according to this complaint filed in a U.S. District Court in Florida, uh, Epstein and this guy, Jean-Luc Brunel, quote, deliberately engaged in a pattern of racketeering that involved luring minor children through the uh, MC2 modeling agency, mostly girls under the age of 17, to engage in sexual play for money. Basically, they would get girls from out of the country, many of whom didn't speak English, and they would lure, get them into the United States on uh, visas to work as models. On the promise know, of a modeling contract. Right. And then once they were there, they would be staying in condos that just happened to be owned by Jeffrey Epstein, and uh, they would be charged, quote, rent, which meant they would be prostituted. I mean, that's classic child, yeah. you know, that's classic trafficking, right. is you bring someone in, and then they're staying at your place, and then you make them pay rent by trafficking their services. And uh, for what it's worth, John luc Burnell would actually stay at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion for the time that he was incarcerated. Uh, so, you know, it's just kind of like horrifying uh, all of the stuff that... That's not part of just the Palm Beach uh, uh, criminal right. case that we're talking about. By the way, the parallels with the uh, recent um, R. Kelly documentary are also kind of stunning. That it seems like once a, like these pedophiles get powerful enough, they just have these live-in <laughs> sex become... slaves. Uh, yeah, and they, they both just... can't read. They become the bank. <laughs> <laughs> But um, so basically, and then uh, uh, one other thing, and then we can talk about uh, with the time we have left, the future. But essentially, uh, Epstein, <laughs> what's going to happen next? But Epstein owns what's called Little St. James Island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. According to The Guardian, for a time, the wife of the governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands was managing two companies that Epstein set up there. Mm-hmm. Um, so he owns this. And then according to Virginia Roberts, it's like secluded. They would have, according to Virginia Roberts, they would have child orgies there because this is a 70 acre island that's totally secluded uh that you know nobody really knows what's going on there and that uh, not except the locals who coined the term for his airplane (laughs) um the lolita express yes and uh i I did just want to mention if you google the little saint james island you will learn that people will leave google reviews for the little (laughs) saint james island and the little saint james island has 1.2 stars out of five 
And I just wanted to share two of these with you. Uh, quote, I am leaving this review for the children that never got to leave Pedophile oh Island. My God. <laughs> one star. <laughs> and then another one is there is enough operators and, pa- and patriots that should infiltrate this island and... <laughs> And end the horror for these young people. Surveillance till more are on the island. Okay, that would rule. <laughs> <laughs> just those. That's a that's the real move. Forget right. going to the comet ping pong. Just get a cigarette boat full of your army buddies and try to go out there. <laughs> what, uh, we, we thought this was a Chuck E. Cheese one star. <laughs> <laughs> the country bear band came alive. <laughs> But yes, so you know that's uh, the the direct action you can take is to leave one star reviews <laughs> for Epstein's pedophile island. That would be the John Oliver segment on yeah, the, the right, pedophile right, right, island. Right. <laughs> you can go to Google and leave a one star <laughs> review, <laughs> so people don't go to his private island. But I mean, essentially, like the future here is there's there's one civil case that's ongoing as of as of this recording, which is basically. Uh, because of this, this uh, non-prosecution agreement uh, violates um, what was called the Crime Victims' Rights Act. Which right, because they yeah. kept it from the victims. They kept the, the, the terms of the deal from the victims. They didn't know about it before it had been carried out, mm-hmm. which violated this law. Right. So because it violated this law, there's this ongoing civil case, and they're essentially trying to get the non-prosecution agreement thrown out, which would allow Epstein to be charged right. again, you know, federally uh, for whatever on the statute, wh- wherever the statute of limitation hasn't expired or, or whatever else. But the point is this, this case is ongoing a- as of, as of this moment, but it is just something where it's like, I guess we'll just keep our eyes out because either more stuff comes out or this just kind of goes away. Like in, um, in, uh, Alex Acosta's, uh, Senate hearings for when he became labor secretary, a couple people brought this up. I think Diane Feinstein briefly, but it just wasn't kind of pressed. It was, you know, 60 some senators voted for the guy. And then he said, oh, you know, it's better. We got two years acting like, you know, it was hard to get more than that or something. So, uh, I guess just like in the future, uh, We'll see if he has enough to just uh, make the political establishment or the elite businessmen or whoever else consolidate themselves behind him. Or he'll, or he'll, uh, he'll, you know, just show up uh, dead somewhere. Like, uh, <laughs> yes, right. Like he's uh, I was like thinking autoerotic of... asphyxiation <laughs> while watching Hannah Montana reruns or something. <laughs> I'm I'm sure he's got like a dead man's switch though. On right. he should. I if was he, thinking if about that. If he's smart, he does. Which means that, yeah, I mean, if they if they take him down, he might decide to just press it. Well, mm-hmm. he's a brain yeah. scientist. He is. <laughs> Imagine models being like, I don't want to go to your island. I looked at the Yelp review. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of one stars on there. <laughs> Andy, you have that drop of like the, uh, the I had address. This drop. Uh, I saw everything, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. He is circumcised. My bad. He's circumcised, 110% sure. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he has some sort of birth defect on his thing. Um, it's like a teardrop, like a drop of water. It's really fat at the bottom and skinny at the top where it's attached. And he never gets fully hard, ever. I was thinking about the one with all the addresses. <laughs> There's like, so, yeah. Uh, what a chilling drop to just bring <laughs> on it. I got one more, oh, too. Man. It should be the teaser. I loaded up three drops describing uh, Jeffrey Epstein's God, penis. I'm so happy you let us know. There's another one. <laughs> Before you displayed it for us, it's more but of a threat. You have the names and addresses poll, or uh, just like the I have list the names of... one, I, but we already played it. Oh, we already played. Yeah, that, with like yeah. Bill Richardson and Bill. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bill yeah. Richardson. Which okay. I, I love that. Just the wet blanket from two thousand eight. Wearing a polo one. tie. Right. <laughs> According to Vanity Fair, again, this proves nothing. But billionaire, this is the article that came out before he was outed as a sex predator. Uh, billionaire Ronald Perlman was a frequent dinner guest. Uh, billionaire Leon Not Black. Ronald Perlman. Uh, Ronald Perlman. Uh, yeah, the guy from Hellboy. Not Perlman. Ronald Perlman. No, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I checked. Yeah. Uh, billionaire Leon Black, frequent dinner guest, Donald Trump, of course, Woody Allen. And, and so, you know, it's just like if you spend back. enough time Googling, you can tangentially connect him to so many people that it's you know, five it's very degrees scary. of Epstein. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he does not drink or smoke tobacco. Oh, good. There's but, uh, six degrees of 
if you want to have a, a complete breakfast, you need six degrees of Kevin Bacon <laughs> and then the six degrees of the egg. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I guess, uh, Matt, uh, are there things we didn't get to where you're kind of closing thoughts on this, man? Uh, no, I think we were pretty thorough. This is good. A lot of good research you guys did, which I'm, of course, totally unwilling to do due to <laughs> congenital laziness. But uh, it's really always <laughs> horrifying just to to lay it out and see the just lack of any, on his part, concern, his enti- entirety of him doing it. Being willing to just put out a, a net of hundreds of girls and saying, like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to get in trouble for this. And then you're like, you idiot, of course you are. And that's like, no, he was right. He was right. <laughs> he was get in, in any meaningful sense, no, he wasn't going to get in trouble for this. And it just tells you, yeah, there's a, there's a whole other strata up there. Mm. They do what they want to do. And yeah, there was a reference earlier to Kubrick. I mean... Um, there is a whole theory that Eyes Wide Shut is based on stuff that he was directly uh, familiar with right, from right. his exposure to the uh, the upper crust who he rubbed elbows with, especially mm. in where? The United Kingdom that he lived <laughs> in, from years, where they invented the practice. I mean, the, the, the last... I mean, the last prime minister, David Cameron, mm. uh, w- admitted basically that uh, when he was uh, in, in the fourth form or whatever, he put his dick in a dead pig's mouth. <laughs> uh, and we know that uh, the skull and bones for many years, the initiation ritual involved lying in a coffin naked and jacking off while listing your sexual history. Jesus. Uh, and it just makes sense. You know, it's like the ruling class is it's a class. And that means not only that they share uh, economic interests, but they have a social milieu. And they have a, they have rituals of of bonding, like you know, going to to the Buffalo Wild Wings and watching a football game. Only, you know, the Wild Wings are uh, adrenochrome uh, snacks that came from the came up brains of the children. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then like the Miami Herald, which wrote this great long piece, their current campaign, which I think is kind of hopeless, is they're trying to get the Senate to pass a bill which would allow the Inspector General to investigate Alex Acosta's role in this, and you know, getting the Senate to do anything, much less <laughs> <laughs> expose the pedophile cover yeah. up, I think is kind of a long shot. But yeah, I don't know, think you're going to get a super majority of people who aren't entangled with that. <laughs> <scene>. <laughs> Two thirds of the Senate yeah. who are. Not. Um, but and then again, there's still a lot of sealed documents in like uh, the Virginia Roberts case, like uh, one of her cases was settled and there's uh, uh, sealed documents related to that. So there's just a lot of open questions about what's in these sealed documents. And maybe we'll all get to learn within the next five or 10 years or, or <laughs> maybe everything goes away and then yeah. we don't talk about it again. <laughs> I think the only way you're going to really get to the bottom of it is if you give uh, a random person a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and no, but somebody who had no connection to the wealthy mm-hmm. at all, and then you're like, "All right, you have a billion dollars now. No one can take it from you. You are set forever. Your family is now super wealthy, and now you can go and you can bring down the the pedophiles. And then, like, he can create his own sort of anti pedo Pinkertons right, right. <laughs> to go to town and investigate it and reveal it to the public." Uh, because that's the only way it would happen is a countervailing force of, of vast wealth b- being able to circumvent the obviously cr- compromised formal channels of justice. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say it would probably be um, the uh, fastest turnover from buying a Gulfstream to having a sudden uh, high altitude depressurization. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, oh, this idiot, he left the dipstick in. Yeah. <laughs> of course it was going to fall, crash in, out of the sky somehow. Yes. Sometimes limos explode. Yeah. All right. Any other closing thoughts we didn't get to? Um, yes. Allison explained that Epstein's penis was deformed. She explained that his penis was oval-shaped. She claimed when Epstein's penis was erect... It was thick toward the bottom, but was thin and small toward the head portion. She called Epstein's penis egg-shaped. You're never going to think of (laughs) balloon clowns the same (laughs) way. (laughs) Uh, Uh, Or uh, omelets. Um, but uh, uh, Matt Chrisman, uh, again, is my, obviously my favorite podcast, Chapo Trap House. I want to thank you sincerely for coming and doing yeah, this with us. So much, yeah. And, um, you know.
First they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. Berlusconi flatly denies that any mafia money helped him to get a start in real estate. I have I've always had a thing for black people. I like black people. I'm telling you, these stories are funnier than, than the jokes you can tell. And I said, what the fuck is a brain scientist? I was like, that's not a real job. I'm tell me the truth. The but anyway, no worries, man. It's all good. All right. We ready? Yeah. All right. In five, four, three, two. Hello, welcome to Grub Stakers, the podcast about billionaires. My name is Sean P. McCarthy, and I'm joined by my friends... Yogi Polywall, Steve Jeffries. Andy Palmer. And uh, so back in January, we did this episode about Jeffrey Epstein, and uh, very proud of it. I think it turned out very well, and uh, it's so well that, in fact, that he was arrested in July. <laughs> and uh, we, Proud of you guys for making you. that happen. <laughs> for that episode, we were uh, thrilled to be joined by uh, Matt Chrisman um, of Chapo Trap House. He couldn't make it today. Yeah. And uh, we're very thankful for a follow-up episode where he is here as well. Matt, thank you for being here. Oh, love talking Epstein. Yes. Mm. And uh, the only way that episode could be better is if we also had the uh, Hannibal Burris to Epstein's <laughs> Bill Cosby, <laughs> the man who uh, popularized the myth. Famous uh, comedian Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're joined by uh, one of the funniest comics I know. Nick Mullen is here as well. Hello. And uh, we're, we're just really thrilled, and I'm sure the audience is as well, to be able to sit and, and listen to these two great minds in this conspiracy theory, the, the Chomsky and Foucault debates of Pizzagate, <laughs> as it were. Um, but I guess I wanted to ask both of you just to start, if uh, having looked at Epstein before this arrest in July uh, and some of the press reports that have come out today, is there anything that have surprised you so far about what you've seen and learned? The temple thing was weird. I mean, that's like that was where it's like, come yeah, on, man, you know, holy I, shit. Right. I mean, it's like it, it, it's like, oh, yeah, we found uh, this like big obelisk that says on the side there actually is a basement. In Comic <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, OK, well, why why would you build that? Why do you have that on your island? And people are like, I don't know. Maybe it's because he's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Jewish person and they like building things. So. That's that's a possible explanation. It could be a storage shed for tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, I remember that. Yeah, the first time I saw the, the uh, temple, I just thought, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Mm -hmm. I mean, the, there's only two explanations. The one is it's exactly what it looks like, and you're dealing with Moloch worshiping <laughs> reptilians, <laughs> or they're all just like really fucking irony poison cutesy motherfuckers <laughs> who uh jesus yeah if, uh, if, who love winking at what other people think they're love, doing right, and they're right. like oh yeah you think we're uh we're we're uh doing temple worship uh uh rituals uh haha, that's so funny no we just fuck the kids <laughs> <laughs> we we don't do any of that stuff you dumbasses but we'll we'll wind you up and, and make right, you get right. uh get upset about it if anyone's uh wondering what what's being described here about the temple like l go on youtube and just look up epstein island drone right and yeah yeah well it's this weird temple that's got kind of like a, 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 a like an eastern look to it and then there's like bird statues on top and then <laughs> statues of either neptune or possibly saturn right um there's a sundial too there's a sundial uh, and the insider then, said it was Poseidon. Oh, yeah, a okay. trident wielding, wielding Poseidon is on yeah, the temple. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, but the thing that sucks is that, like, uh, 4chan knew about all this already. Right. Like, this, is all, this was all just, like, Pizzagate stuff. All of it was, like, you know, uh, like, QAnon stuff. Right. They already knew about the temple. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like, this is not, like, news to anybody that was already, like into Clinton baby eating well, conspiracy. That was the thing is like we did this episode with with Matt in January and yeah. so I looked at like 4chan threads and I would always see Epstein as a Mossad agent and mm -hmm. I would just think oh well they're just saying that because th he's Jewish and yeah. they just assume all Jews are in Mossad. Yeah. And it's like no yeah he actually probably is a Yeah Masadic. it's not like the Mossad what does else nothing. They you know, <laughs> or, or like they do things. <laughs> like they have a fucking job you know. I mean I it's, is it really that far out of like maybe they're doing it to fuck with the Olympics again? I don't know. <laughs> we won't know until everything shakes out. Because that's the job of intelligence agencies is to compromise people who have influence. You know, uh, it's like he's an American. He has all these connections to American 
uh, intelli- uh, you know, politics and, and business and, and Israel, like Jonathan Pollard, there's a long tradition yeah. of them spying on the United States. It would, he'd be a fantastic asset. Yeah, Would, Masa, uh, Epstein was in that Steven Spielberg movie, Munich. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, yeah, I can't wait until we get Eric Bana as Jeffrey <laughs> Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel, Daniel Craig as Bill Clinton. Yeah, Epstein was the guy who killed that waiter in Lilyhammer. Yeah. Oh, man, I don't want to see the sex scene at the end with <laughs> Bana as Epstein. It would be even more cringe-inducing than the I haven't one seen that movie in a while. It's tight, right? It's good. Yeah. I remember liking it in theaters, but I, I haven't seen it since. Yeah, it's good. But there's yeah. that scene at the end where he's having sex with his wife and he's flashing back on the Munich mm-hmm. killings. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's very over the top. Uh, one of the few Spielberg sex scenes, and it reminds you why he doesn't do them that often. Yeah. Uh, and it makes you think. Except in E.T. That, that entire movie <laughs> is technically a sex scene. <laughs> yeah. It's been an alien that, that comes and he gets to do whatever he wants with children. <laughs> and no one questions him, except the government. <laughs> 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 he's just, just a shit government. He's just wants a to, yeah. penis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a penis. Like but the way his neck moves. Right. He's a very bulbous head. <laughs> yeah. He's a man that's been kept alive for thousands of years by go- doing intergalactic travel, finding children to have sex with. <laughs> and now this this bastard New Order government wants to take that away from him. Even though this has been the system forever, <laughs> um, like, that's how we get interna- interdimensional travel. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So, so the temple thing, like that, like I guess, you know, more mainstream media picked up on the story, like uh, after the the, you know, the Epstein arrest, and uh, like what I saw more than anything was like some interview with just some general contractor. Right. They talked to some like fucking Joe the plumber guy that's like, <laughs> well, it's got, you know, a lock on the outside of the door. That's pretty weird. <laughs> you know? And then like that was any, all anybody talked about. And it's like, oh, you, you know, also there can't be an elevator in there because, uh, you know, the contractors would, you know, they, the contractors would know about it. And it's like, well, like, the government hires contractors all the time to <laughs> fucking build like, you know, secret projects. There's plenty yeah. of people that will build things from, you know, yeah, if anyone enough knows money. To silence people, it's Epstein. It's not yeah, exactly that hard to fucking fake a goddamn elevator. There's really right. strict Department of Buildings codes law with regards to sacrificial temples to mall yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but anyways, it's like the, that, that, that door on the outside with the lock on it is just painted on. It's like a facade. There's, huh. It's not, there's nothing in there. Or, it's, you know, it's flush. You can see where it's, you know, there's not even that indentation on the, uh, uh, the wall. But it's modeled after, I guess 4chan found this, this, this bathhouse in Syria. Hmm. With, you know, that's got the the palm trees, the pattern on the outside, the gold dome. Everything looks similar to this bathhouse. Um, but what's crazy is, do you, did you follow that Isaac Cappy thing? No. So Isaac Cappy was an actor who was, like, going nuts. He accused a bunch of other people. He accused Seth Green of pedophilia. He said he used to be friends with, with Seth Green, and Seth Green, like, brought him into some secret room in his house, and he's like, this is where we have sex with kids, you know? <laughs> Or whatever, Man. and and then he like increasingly would just you know became like a pedo gay guy. That could and have been Colin Quinn if he got the part in Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really released all these videos, and then uh, and then killed himself. He like he Jeez. jumped off a bridge, but like witnesses saw like two people like trying to stop him. But it's like, you know, I mean. I don't know how two people can't restrain a guy from right, right, right. It, from, <laughs> from jumping guy. off a fucking from, from from jumping off a fucking bridge. So it's like you know, there's a theory that maybe they pushed him off, or you know, who knows what. But he he released a weird video, and now now they all have this thing where like everybody has like a dead man switch, like a video that uploads when they die. Right. And there was a video circulating that I may or may not be related to to Cappy, probably not. That says like this was taken to Jeffrey Epstein's island, and it was a bathhouse in Turkey, and it's a bunch of like little girls wearing like ceremonial togas mm. filling the bath with water and looking like sad and it's like it's just this bizarre video and then people were like no this is from this this like bathhouse in turkey and they like sourced it but then it turns out the temple is like modeled after this fucking bathhouse in syria and it's like i don't know man there's all this like weird shit that that is sort of connected one way or the other but that's my understanding of the state of things thus far. Well, it's so fucking bizarre because he builds that temple, Jeffrey Epstein does, after he gets out of prison. Like, 2009 to 2013 is our estimate of when it's built. And I did like he had to, like, submit an estimate of his finances to the government. So supposedly someone probably tried to value the temple. Can't really do comparable sales to get that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, 
but it is just something where you know it's it's very bizarre and it's hard to get around i guess an occult well, explanation you would evaluate it with its highest and best use <laughs> so i mean it's a great location for uh, any, privacy any, any manner of private rituals with children <laughs> to gain uh, influence with the wealthy yeah but it's like I don't really know. Maybe there's like a, a submarine bay or a stargate down there or something <laughs> what's, I saw. What's weird is how shitty it looks. Yeah. Yeah, it's got like ladders and like cheap... Well, the ladder the ladder is like a Freemason's reference, isn't it? <laughs> it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, the ladder is not like... I think that's supposed to be there. Just Wait, the one like, that's inside of it? No, 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 the one on the outside. Oh, no. Oh, you're talking about, yeah, there's like yeah, scaffolding like and the windows. shit. windows. It looks like they're working on it. Well, they're working on, I mean, they're obviously like tearing something down. I don't know what work needs to be done on it, you know, a decade after it was built. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it just looks shitty. Like, it just doesn't look like it, w- it is particularly well made. Yeah, it does have that McMansion kind uh, of. Yeah, well, yeah, it looks like a maintenance shed that's been like dolled up for some reason. So it's like, it, it adds to this idea that, Something's like a miss with this whole thing. It's just everything about it is just fucking weird, you know. I think he built it so that people like it's. It's like an insurance policy. If he gets caught, it'll be like his rich friends were like, "You've got to build this. It'll be so funny when you get caught. Everyone <laughs> sees it. At least you'll have that." Yeah, like I understand. Even if it's like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm a fucking millionaire or billionaire. I go mm-hmm. around the world. I travel all the time. I got a taste for fucking bathhouses in Syria. This is like my favorite bathhouse. I wanted my own bathhouse. Rich people do dumb shit like that all the time. But it's like why you would make a shitty version of it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Another Coney Island piece of trash gets rich and builds mm-hmm. a fucking Mick satanic sacrifice <laughs> that's, that's his whole thing is he, he makes himself look much richer than he is mm-hmm. to gain influence. Well, he's obviously he has the island, you know, and there's yeah, some people are true. like, oh, well, you know, it's because like the contractors you get down there, they can't do the kind of work that actually like, you know, b- like cope the inside of that, you know, alcove <laughs> right. and put a door in, which is like pretty basic shit. I, I, right. know, like it doesn't make any sense that they wouldn't be able to do that. You should go punch up the island, Nick. <laughs> yeah. You're into woodworking now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just do the Property Brothers episode. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein's <laughs> island. Yeah. We're thinking open floor plan. <laughs> While Jeremy gets started on the work, I'm going to be downstairs in the basement. <laughs> so we're going to need to uh, fill in this mass grave over here with cement and make it into a basketball court before we get this thing on the market. <laughs> I wish I could do something about this altar, but it's load-bearing. <laughs> <laughs> we're stuck with it. Yeah, we were thinking about making this a nursery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're planning on having kids? Yeah, about 500. <laughs> <laughs> they get into some fight with yeah. the Historical Preservation Society. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, too, because imagine you're just, like, somebody that lives on the U.S. Virgin Islands. I don't know what, like, the closest one to this is. Yeah. You know, and you take your boat out to go fishing, and you get, like, fucked up, and you accidentally end up here. You're like... I'm, I'm just trying to get back to my house. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, however they talk. Just <laughs> lost on the island. <laughs> <laughs> I took a wrong turn, man. I'm trying to get back. To- <laughs> They're just fitting you for a robe. Yeah. yeah. I watch. I rewatch I wa- Eyes Wide Shut. Great movie. Man. Yeah. Um, just that guy they're like okay well do you know the password I don't know I'm just trying to go <laughs> but the other password <laughs> I don't know I come here and they say this is where you bo- I come my board was just parked <laughs> but it, we should I guess mention with regards to his wealth his lawyer submitted something that said he was worth 559 million and then they have you know properties he has the little St. James Island they said worth 60 million great St. James Island worth 22 million uh, property in Paris, property in New Mexico, property in Florida, the Manhattan Mansion. Um, but I guess the point is, essentially, they have every w- reason to lowball that. You know, like Miami Herald found like four and a half million in Paradise Papers accounts that he didn't declare. So the reality is like, yeah, he's probably close to a billionaire, if not an actual straight up billionaire. Yeah. Um, and it is just something where... But isn't everyone a billionaire now? Isn't that what they're telling us? <laughs> Everybody's got a billion dollars. But I, I guess... Except me and my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but you know, I guess we could just kind of go through. He was uh, denied bail, of course. He had like seventy thousand cash in his safe. They found forty-eight loose diamonds, like various carrots, you know, which is like very good when you need to to bail. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Prosecutor said he's not valuing his art and his diamonds collection, which like those are very good for money laundering because you can sell art. You know, like Sotheby's never checks shit. You know, it's a very good store of value if you need like access to a hundred million. In a pinch. Easier to transport to cash, too. <laughs> yeah, that's what the guy from the 1MDB scandal that we talked about before, Joe Lowe, did. Like, when he went on the run after he got caught, he just took a bunch of Picassos with him, and that's how he's living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, and so, of course, they also found an Austrian passport from the 1980s, which listed his residence as Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabian residence. Yeah. Um, and it's just all this kind of stuff where they denied bail because obviously he's a flight risk, but it raises the question if he was actually in intelligence, you know, uh-huh. like CIA. I think it's like clear that he was. You think so? Yeah. Why would he have an Austrian passport? <laughs> like, it, there was a fake name on there, too, wasn't right. there? Yeah. Yeah, it was a fake it name. Was, yeah. It doesn't, there's no reason for that. I mean, you could say, oh, yeah, he used to have citizenship somehow. It's like that doesn't explain why he has a fake name. Yeah, and they tried to, because the, the government used that as evidence for his flight risk, and then they not, then the defense attorney said, well, he used that to in the 80s during the era of hijackings to prevent uh, like Muslim uh, terrorists from realizing he was Jewish and like killing him or something, right, Leon right. Klinghoffering him or something. Uh, and then the other thing they said is they said, and he never used it. It was just it was just a safe you know in case thing. And then uh, they pointed out, well, there's a bunch of stamps in it, <laughs> like they. There's fucking passport stamps mm-hmm. in it. Like it was used, and and they had no answer for that. But uh, like, w- if if it's a fake passport, then it's it couldn't have been used by anybody else, right? Because it's got his picture in it. Yeah. So that that just can't be the case. He had to have been using this thing. He literally was traveling under an assumed name. Right. Yeah. And like, so there's of course that Daily Beast. Uh, Vicky Ward uh, reported that Alex Acosta, the former Labor Secretary at the time, U.S. Attorney, he told the Trump transition that I was told Epstein quote belonged to intelligence and to leave it alone. He said he took one meeting about this and then left it alone. Um, he <laughs> he didn't deny that. Alex Acosta didn't deny that at a press conference. And then I found like. In 2001, there was a British journalist named uh, Nigel Rosser who was writing about the royal family because Prince Andrew was hanging out with Epstein. And he said Epstein, quote, has a license to carry a concealed weapon and once claimed to have worked for the CIA, although he now denies it. And it's like it fucking it's impossible to get a license for a gun in New York City. Yeah, yeah. him and Trump are the only ones. <laughs> no, I really, that. it's something like there's like 15 people that have fucking like, <laughs> right. concealed carry permits. Trump th- did claim that he was one of them. Which oh, is, really? Yeah, he did. He said that, which is one of his best, funniest lies. It's <laughs> the idea of him carrying a gun. There's a gun store in Chinatown. If you go in there, well, I went in there one time. There's a Chinese guy that works there. He's like, yeah, get out. No license. Get out. <laughs> it's like, this is your business. <laughs> yeah, you don't have license. Get out if you don't have it. Like, immediately. <laughs> Nobody goes in there. Right. <laughs> But it is something where it's like, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell is accused, she hasn't been charged with anything, of essentially in multiple sworn affidavits of being... Caring his, too much about the ocean. Of being his pimp, you know, like bringing underage girls to him. Mm-hmm. And Actually, the term is bottom bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your bottom dollar bitch is... She's not the pimp, he's the pimp. And her job is to turn out new women. Um, but so, yeah, her dad, Robert Maxwell, was like... Almost cer- there was an entire book written about how he was in Mossad. He was a British publisher who turned up dead in 1991. He washed up off his yacht after he was either pushed or uh, jumped in the, the ocean. And he, he was British citizen, and he got a state funeral in Israel <laughs> where um, the uh, speaker there said that nobody will ever know how much he has done for Israel. Mm-hmm. You know, So it's like it makes sense where Epstein meets his daughter, Ghislaine Maxwell, around 1991, and then from there is where most of the abuse allegations come from, from the mm-hmm. 90s, early 2000s. So it's like, I mean, it's totally conceivable he's either CIA or Mossad. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I guess, like, the other thing that's kind of the open question is that uh, Virginia Roberts is one of the accusers uh, who um, 
sued Gislin Maxwell in 2015 for defamation because she called her a liar for saying Gislin Maxwell molested her along with Epstein. Yeah. And then they settled, but these 2,000 pages related to that are all under seal, and then uh, the second appeals court has ordered them to be unsealed, and they might even be unsealed it's, next week. It's crazy that no one will care if it is just a, a weird Mossad thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no one will fucking care at all that they we spent billions of dollars... That was funneled to us from U.S. taxpayers to make every make uh, every elite in America rape children <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, and then people will be like, ah, you know, I don't know. Meanwhile, a Russian person makes one face emoji, app, <laughs> and they're like, uh, uh, it's a police state. Uh, they're using your data to do something. Just imagine them like uh, whipping votes for the uh, outlaw BDS vote with the Epstein tapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if all of like the politicians who are like like it's a Mossad operation to blackmail all these politicians and they're all like thrown in jail and then all the worst case scenario stuff happens to Israel like they're immediately invaded <laughs> now that America's pulled out of everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, Oopsie Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> but, that's, but that's the thing. It's like, if it is like some sort of intelligence operation, uh-huh. uh, then it, it it kind of makes you wonder why would that be necessary? Because do you really need to do that to keep American elites on board with supporting Israel? Well, yeah. if it if that is the thing that has been doing it, yes. Like there's not, like the the amount of support for Israel is only like just fucking increased right. with less need for it yeah. in the last like thirty years. And it's like, what if that's the fucking keystone <laughs> to the whole thing? Is that they're all on tape sodomizing an eight year old? <laughs> In a weird Syrian bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, that might be it. I have no idea. I've, uh, but I think there's a, uh, the alternate explanation is that it's not necessarily, that the, the order of operations is sort of the other way, is that this is just a thing that happens, that, that uh, Epstein filled a role that elite society needed of this procurer that could be trusted. I mean, his, his career path really does look like somebody who was literally groomed and drafted up through the ranks uh, at every level by people more powerful than him with the idea that he had some value add to provide to them, which absolutely had nothing to do with his genius math abilities. Yeah. Uh, Instead of the next James Bond being a black lady, it should just be a pedophile. <laughs> 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 or it should be a black lady pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> she should be just having sex with children. <laughs> Finally, we're <laughs> doing it. Yeah. We're, girl, like, we're, do, we're showing yeah. that we can do it too. Well, we wanted to do two things with this one. is uh, More representation, obviously, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. also uh, a more accurate look at, at MI6 <laughs> and what, what really goes on in the intelligence community. But, I mean, so this is a network that like persists. It's it's a need that's filled in the, in the, in the elite community and that the intelligence aspect sort of comes afterwards as something that they are aware of because they could not be if they're like even basely competent and something that needs to be basically monitored like it's like oh god they're fucking kids again well, we got to make sure we know what's going on who's involved that so nobody who is genuinely like outside of the power nexus might get in there like insinuate themselves that might like create a situation where they have leverage to like fuck up what is conceived as American or Israeli interests and it's just sort of like it's it's just it's the the intelligence department the intelligence industry or uh, intelligence agencies are aware of this they monitor it to keep track on it and make sure that it isn't uh, compromising them and that they're not really like it's it's good to have in the back pocket to have mm-hmm. these people's you know child fucking on record but they're going to do what rich people do. They're the like, leader going to do what they do. Like they're going to do what is seen as in the interests of, you know, the United States and and their client states like Israel and Saudi Arabia. You just and they're going to cement those relationships through kid fucking ritually. <laughs> and the uh, you know, the CIA and Mossad are sort of just there to like stand outside the door and make sure that like no rogue Russians or something or like, a Chinese guy with like a USB stick shows up. <laughs> So that, like, at the next trade conference, General Z- uh, President Xi can just, like, pull up a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, we're on the yawn. And the United dollar is gone. Yeah. Let Huawei in. Yeah. <laughs> but that, if you had a video of 
President Xi eating children. I don't think anyone in China would care. <laughs> no, that's the beauty part. Like, yeah. yeah, they're totally they're they're hardened against it. Yeah, you yeah, can't compromise. We're the only one. Exactly. You can't compromise a Chinese birth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you have a video of them as a child referring to an adult by their real their first name, <laughs> <laughs> that's like the only thing. That Violating do it. Yeah. Confucian filial yeah, right. piety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but it is something where there was that article in uh, Vanity Fair by Gabe Sherman, and he quotes the appeals court ruling that says these doc, these 2,000 pages that are supposedly to be unsealed soon um, it contain allegations against, quote, numerous prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, a well-known prime minister, who I'm going to guess is a, a gotta be Barack, Barack yeah. of Israel, mm. uh, Israeli prime minister, 99 to 2001, and other world leaders, unquote. So it's something where it's like there's just a lot of speculation, which maybe we could add to, but just from this like uh, Vanity Fair article in the past decade, the source, uh, a source close to Epstein said, a guy who'd done business with S Epstein said Bill Gates, Larry Summers, and Steve Bannon visited the mansion, and this would be after he got out of prison. See, uh, whenever I, I remember I read, read about the Bannon thing a few weeks ago, and I just immediately thought of that story about that fucking acid scorched bathtub right. at that rental property he had. Do you know about that, Nick? No. So he uh, had this uh, very messy litigation in Miami a few years ago before he, uh, I think when he was, before he started Breitbart, I think, when he was just sort of like running around doing coke and like trying to set up entertainment deals, he had, an, uh, uh, he had a rental home in Miami and he was sued by the owner after he left for just catastrophic damage. Like they just turn it into a fucking crack house basically just complete shit on the walls type stuff yeah. and one of the things that they reported is that the, the very expensive marble bathtub had acid burns on it Oh, it's to like dissolve a body. I mean, that's what I thought immediately, yeah. and it's like right. LOL. And now it's like <laughs> hanging out with Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me think even more. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, just yeah. dissolving fucking bodies in there. Yeah, it's funny. I like I read that Don Simpson biography recently. And compared to the rest of them, it's like he was like a fucking Mormon. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's just nothing. He would hire know. prostitutes who were of age. Yeah. And he'd slap them around, yeah. you know, but he would also pay them uh -huh. and never dissolve well, any have, of them. He would, have, he would have them fuck it, like fuck him. Yeah. And, shit, mm. and do like weird like they would wear strap ons and he was in all sorts of shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, nobody got dissolved. <laughs> nobody, was, nobody was dissolved. Don Simpson never had anyone murdered. He was just a fucking... Supported sex workers. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he was a moron that hated himself. <laughs> and uh, But he was slick. Yeah. And, and he could, like, sell shitty movies. <laughs> well, and it is something where... So these documents, these 2,000 pages, they all relate to Virginia Roberts is one of the accusers. Uh, she was trafficked by Epstein between 99 mm -hmm. and 2002. That's the Billy Joel songs. <laughs> 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 Billy Joel met her. He's the one that turned her out. He was there at Epstein's place. That's what in the They're air like, tonight. we got a problem. <laughs> Billy's drunk and he's writing songs again. <laughs> <laughs> Billy's writing songs. He's using everyone's real name. <laughs> <laughs> he's, writing, he's writing a sequel to We Didn't Start the Fire. Yeah. It's just a list of everyone on the flight logs. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Andrew Bill Clinton. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like Virginia Roberts has alleged that yeah. Alan Dershowitz. If you think about it, Long Island is the original pedophile island. <laughs> <laughs> That's the original Little St. James is Long Island in its entirety. Uh, uh, Virginia Roberts has alleged that Alan Dershowitz um, uh, raped her at the uh, the New Mexico mansion. So the thing is, like, you know, uh, I don't know if we mentioned did, this. Well, did I tell you, this is a, I, I, I started telling people because I don't think they give a shit, but I visited the <laughs> the uh, the Lampoon. We did a show in Boston. The Lampoon. Harvard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I guess Dershowitz's grandson wrote for the Lampoon <laughs> for a little bit. And so all these, like, Lampoon his kids. his fucking packet is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> These Lampoon kids, like, knew him or whatever, right. and uh, they were like, ah, oh, you know, he was kind of lame. And he's like, but one time he told it, he was, like, bragging about losing his virginity, and oh, he had no. just gone on vacation with f his fucking grandpa. And he's like, and after all that fucking Epstein shit came out, we, like, figured out what dates those were, and they were, like, when he was like, I brought my grandson on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it, like, fucking yeah. lines up with, like, it, you know, him getting, like, fucking a child. Getting his, like, you know, bring his grandson along to, you know, get his cherry popped on the... Jesus Christ. No, and, you know, that's all fucking hearsay or whatever, but I... I, I would someone from Harvard lie? <laughs> and that's never happened. He's yeah. a, a co-head writer on SNL now. Yeah. <laughs> 
But so uh, I guess I just mentioned that because another thing is uh, Jeffrey Epstein's black book was, you know, the housekeeper in, in Palm Beach uh, tried to sell this. He got charged with extortion for it. He tried to sell it to one of the attorneys um, and he ser- he died in 2014. But before he sold this black book and you can look at it on Gawker, he circled names that yeah. he's mm-hmm. alleged were either witnesses or perpetrators. And the thing is, like, Former Democrat New Mexico governor Bill Richardson happens to be circled in there. Another uh, New Mexico governor is in there as well. So it's just something where it's like we're speculating about what's in these 2,000 pages. You know, yeah, when that came out initially, because, like, I started getting interested in Epstein again after the Kevin Spacey thing, because it's like Kevin Spacey ties in the singer or whatever. And I was more concerned with David Geffen and Spielberg, who Mm -hmm. I think are, like, you know, also pedophiles just right the Hollywood well that's right the on. other 4chan thing so we should probably take well, and epstein's the nexus though because like spacey's there Spacey's yeah. right. heavy on epstein too yeah spacey's there whatever but uh uh chris tucker is on those like flight logs and i remember looking at it and then seeing somebody be like oh it's a different chris tucker i'm like that's that, what i thought too yeah. I mean, that makes sense but then I looked. You look into it, and it's like it's that Chris Tucker, and it's like, what if Chris Tucker is the one behind? It? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's really considered that. Damn! I mean, the guy—he's <laughs> literally only been in four movies yeah, in the right, last right, twenty right. years. No, yeah, it was fucking uh, the Rush Hour movies, uh, 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 Fifth Element, and then that's it. That's right? it. That is yeah. it. He that's put, it. Why is he hanging out with Bill Clinton? Yeah, fucking. <laughs> And Michael Jackson and all these like huge celebrities. They yeah. love Rush Hour. Yeah, it's what? like every t- four years he's, he's like, I need to justify why I'm f- like involved <laughs> right, here. Right, right, Let right. me hang out with Jackie Chan for uh, in mm-hmm. front of a green screen for two weeks. <laughs> Right, but and so from that Gabe Sherman article, a person involved with litigation against Epstein told him, "quote It's going to be staggering the amount of names. It's going to be contagion numbers. You know, just like the kind of people who would be in these, you know, two thousand pages and so subs- subsequent disclosures." Um, but I guess like if you're like a D list, you're probably hoping there's a lot of A listers in there. Just kind of keep. We all attention. move up, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm gonna be fucking Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Got his spot. I get to fuck Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Damn, she's so hot in that movie. Yeah. Damn. I was thinking, like, so the other thing is, like, um, uh, what's his name? The Washington Post guy, Dave Weigel. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. He reported that um, they found, like, CDs with name with writings on it, like, yep. n- young name and then name, mm-hmm. which are supposedly, like, the blackmail CDs, you know, yeah. that these names together. How many, think about how many of them are on jazz drives. <laughs> <laughs> so they, didn't, they didn't account for media changing. Yeah. What if that's the reason that fucking that that like optical media or, or right, like right. removable media has changed? The reason they had to push SD cards is because Bill Clinton's on a fucking <laughs> <laughs> on a floppy Nobody disk somewhere. Nobody can look at the yeah, CD yeah. anymore. Uh, we got to We gotta come up with. Uh, <laughs> let's push those thumb drives. Let's get those going, and then <laughs> we're gonna switch to the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, that's the reason there's a push to the cloud because the cloud can be hacked and 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 compromising material can be right destroyed. Yeah, it's all got to be hard hard uh, hardware. Uh, other than like they they've got a, a bunch of like uh, private lime wires, but yeah, you f- turn that on, your computer just melts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they uh, they also found a CD in there labeled uh, Stanley Kubrick heart attack done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I I am intrigued by that argument that like you know that Eyes Wide Shut is his uh, his attempt to sort of you know shine a light on these people that he was aware of. Uh, and that the fucking scene you just watched it the scene with him and Sidney Pollack in the billiard room yeah that is one of those yeah. you know sort of Ned Beatty network type moments of, yeah. you know like really looking into the eye of power mm-hmm. and how terrifying it is yeah but it's still so fucking coy yeah. <laughs> you know he's like they were just doing that to mess with you yeah <laughs> and also they're just like having sex with adult prostitutes wearing yeah. stupid masks it's not that it's not that bad really. It's yeah. just pretentious, honestly. Right. It's like, yeah. just fuck a girl on a fucking, you know, on a pile of money. What are you doing with this stupid... <laughs> you don't need to do all this shit if you're just having normal sex with an adult person. Yeah. So I just wanted to talk about a couple names that are uh, speculated to be linked here. Uh, the billionaire Leon Black is a private equity guy. We'll, we'll get back to him in a second. Uh, he was a frequent dinner guest of Epstein's, according to a Vanity Fair profile before Epstein got arrested. Uh, Ronald Perelman, another billionaire. Glenn and Eva Dubin. Apparently, Glenn Dubin's a hedge fund billionaire. But Eva Dubin, some um, 
uh, some articles have pointed out that she was one of the people who helped get Epstein back into Manhattan high society after he got out of prison. She uh, founded Mount Sinai's Breast Cancer Center, and uh, she also just happens to have her name circled in Epstein's black book. Mm -hmm. So it's something where it's like she's a former Miss Sweden and New York socialite who Epstein dated at one point and uh, who obviously after prison... um, uh, tried to get, helped him get back into Manhattan society. She wrote a letter right. to uh, Epstein's probation officer saying that she feels 100% comfortable with Epstein around her family and her f- teenage daughter at the time. Right. Uh, yeah, so and there's no a- reason to say that. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's like, liter- like I-, I attest to his character, this is a good man that yeah. fucked up. That's it. You don't have to be like, I would let him spend <laughs> private time <laughs> with my child. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. It's like you know. I, I mean, I, I I like I can't remember the exact details, but have you read the theories that the uh, like the uh, uh, is it not Menendez or Ramirez? Which is the brothers? Menendez. Menendez brothers. <laughs> oh yeah. They were being pimped out by their parents. What the to oh, yeah. to like Hollywood people? Like there was like that pedo gate, and that's why they flipped out and fucking killed Murdered their parents. Them, yeah. Is mm-hmm. because they were being like sex trafficked yeah. by their parents, basically. And and the thing is like. People sort of have just written off what they said about what their parents did, but you know there was the first trial was a mistrial because largely because they were uh, considered credible by the jury, like yeah. they, they believed them. Yeah, I mean, you look at that 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 fucking uh, even the Michael Jackson documentary, mm-hmm. and they like try to paint those parents in a more sympathetic light, but it's like. You were pimping your fucking yeah. child out to Michael Jackson, <laughs> right? You know, you know what the fuck is going on. Like, there's no way you don't know that. I don't like know. It's like it's not a thing where it's like you know people like fuck up and leave their kid in the car. That's just like absent mindedness. Right, right. There, if it, like I don't care how fucking stupid you are. If somebody's like a, a rich person is like I want to hang out with your boy one on one and have him sleep in my bed. <laughs> it's like at no point. You you know you're making a fucking deal with the devil there. They're like, yes, he's probably molesting my son, but he took us to Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if if it's if that's the sacrifice I need to make to see French clowns, <laughs> I'll do it. I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it. We got to meet just Barbara Streisand. Me yeah. <laughs> it's not just rhythmic gymnastics. They do other things. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, that is awful, but, uh, you know, it's you're exploiting people's desperation, their desire to be around celebrity, sure, yeah. their desire to be mm-hmm. at a higher level than they can. Uh, but like these people who are who, the people who came out of the woodwork to stick their neck outs to defend Epstein after he got mm-hmm. out of jail. Mm-hmm. That it's you. Th- you look at the at the culture of like ass covering and and public relations around really rich, powerful, famous people. All of that goes out the window for this guy who got just. Convicted by what, whatever yeah. you want to say the charge was, everyone knew was fucking kids, fucking young women. Those people are defending themselves Girls. because it's yeah. like no one in that. I mean, especially like fucking Hollywood. We work in the entertainment industry. You know how it works. People are waiting for you to fail. Yeah. You get something. You get something good. People are like, I'm so happy for mm-hmm. you. The second things start looking <laughs> bad, they got the biggest shit eating grin. On <laughs> oh, of course, they can't. Everyone in this business, people would love. People who have known fucking like Steven Spielberg for 50 years, you pick the most successful guy you can think of in Hollywood. If they like, oh, my car broke down and now like all my movies are like tanking or whatever, people would love it. And they would love to be like, oh, I don't know him anymore. You know, they would love to. That's like the entire entertainment industry is built on results and not giving a shit about people as individuals. Mm -hmm. So for anyone, especially elites, to like say like, no, he's actually a good guy. It's like it's entirely just projection. Exactly. It, it, they have to be defending, the, protecting themselves, protecting yeah. a culture that, that they're part of, a, a, a thing where Epstein is an integral element, where he needs to be able to be uh, certain that he will be vouched for, that he yeah. will not be left out in the cold, that they will not be made vulnerable by, by that. They probably got a video of John Voight fucking Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be surprised if there's not a video of him from like fucking 35 years ago. Making his daughter blow him. He did really get really invested in Israel over I know. the last few years. <laughs> he he a, really, really cares about way. Israel a lot. Yeah, I think about he's that. He's not even Jewish. He's not even Jewish, and it's like it's always unprompted. It'll be like, like the biggest story will be right. like fucking, you know, oh, Lee Iacocca died, and then John Voight's like, if you don't love Israel, you should fucking kill yourself. 
<laughs> you should die. You should, a horrible death. And people are like, well, John, what are you, no one's saying anything. <laughs> There's no reason for this. He's like a fucking guy that named like a fucking Obergruppenfuhrer, and he can't yeah. not <laughs> spend his days screaming about Israel. Very late in life. Yeah. Right. Very late in life conversion, conversion to, <laughs> to Israel first as his entire politics. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, no, they got that video. Oh, yeah. On an eight millimeter somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to highlight one name that I haven't seen in the press reports that I found from looking through this book James Patterson wrote, or his co writers wrote. Is it, is it Bill Stills' Money Changer? Is it the no. president Family? is missing? Because Bill. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That Mario and Luigi inspired. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, so James Patterson did another interview with New York Magazine about uh, this book after the Epstein arrest, and he said something to the effect of like, yeah, we looked into the Bill Clinton thing, and there wasn't anything there. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, see that? Oh, yeah, I saw that interview, yeah. which is so funny, because he's like, it, 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 it's like, that's that's what he was waiting for the entire time, is yeah. to exonerate Bill Clinton. He's like, yeah, yeah Epstein, it's like, you know, it happened in 2006 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's good that they uh, they finally got the guy because, you know, this is a really bad guy. He's the bad guy. That's important to remember. <laughs> you know, and they're like, well, what about Bill Clinton? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, see, that's just it. It's like if if Epstein is the nexus of this sort of power elite pedophile ring that he really does look like he is more and more, mm-hmm. then how is he on trial? You know, right. how right. has right. he in, there's only two real explanations. One is the Q is 100 percent correct. And the <laughs> Trump is doing white hat, <laughs> like, uh, like a 30 year long, like undercover. Like he went to the island for recon or whatever. And he's like, I'm going to get you guys when I become president. And now he's springing the trap. I which, love that story. I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I amazing. It. It's, it, it, it's 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 amazing. But like just looking at his brain dissolve in front of you, unless he's doing like that classic <laughs> SNL sketch where Reagan yeah. with Phil Hartman oh, right, 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 behind right. closed doors, he's got all the fucking Iran Contra <laughs> routes and he's doing the math in his head and like speaking five languages. Unless that's the case, then th- at some level there is deniability built into this. I, I, people I, are aware that like there's enough connections cut. There isn't enough like smoking gun stuff to connect to anybody who's really important. And this is what Nixon would have called a limited hangout where you like sacrifice what what is no longer savable to keep everything else. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, there would be some sort of like spinning off of people that you can sacrifice or whatever. Right. With, the, you know, throw them a bone. But it's like I like to think that in it, like Trump is sort of like he is Tom Cruise and eyes wide shut. But instead of being that character, he's more of like a Beverly Hills ninja type <laughs> <laughs> where he's gotten in there by accident, you know, and they, they like thought he was smarter than he was. And now he's ruining everything <laughs> <laughs> by being like he's got an island. I mean, that fucking because, you know, it's like liberals are going nuts for that. Like he likes, you know, some of them, you know, beautiful women oh, as much yeah. as I right, do. Right, some right. of them very young, which is funny because if you. Like the like uh, coverage of it links to that New York Magazine article, and you read it, and the next paragraph is like a, just a glowing review of by Bill Clinton of Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, yeah. Right, right. But you read the whole thing, and that's part of that theory is that you look at that article, and and Trump's basically calling him a pedophile, you know, and then the rest of it is like Bill Clinton being like, oh, actually, he's a good businessman, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or whatever. What and I, it's like it's not that you know it's some like brilliant like contrivance on Trump's part to sneak in that he's a pedophile. He's just like, uh, hey, do you hear this guy fucks kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, everybody does. No, what are you just, no I'm just saying, Bill, you fuck kids. I mean, I've seen you do it. I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Homer at the Stone Cut. <laughs> That is true because, like, he 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 was clearly aware of the stuff, and like, we, I mean, he is the only president, for current or former, who has been accused in you know sworn affidavits of doing rape with Epstein. <laughs> uh, right. uh, uh, but he also liked to br- used to like to brag about how much he was involved with the mafia. Right. Yeah. He would brag about it all the time. I get mob guys in here all the time. We we do great business together, which they literally did. I mean, as he's a New York real estate yeah. guy, there's no other way. Uh, so yeah, and the, the, like none of like his brain is such so special that like the like the the fact that he is implicated in these things yeah. that now that he's president just doesn't compute. Yeah, like it's only what's right in front of him. It's like, <laughs> he, he probably doesn't even remember even that he fucked kids with Epstein. He's yeah. just like that's a bad guy. He, Bill, he's and then like everyone on Fox News says, oh, he's connected to Bill Clinton. He's like Bill Clinton. I knew it. These guys, they're doing they're fucking kids. <laughs> it's like yeah, you were fucking kids with him, dude. Yeah. Uh, no, terrible, terrible. Yeah. Which almost makes him sort of perfect. If he's this mm-hmm. virus that just sort of destroys <laughs> the system, 
I mean, it's it's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it kind of is. It's like I'll vote for a virus. <laughs> it, it, it really is. Yeah. Like Trump is sort of like you know one of those fucking like swine flus that develops by by close proximity of human population <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> livestock <laughs> like like the culture we've created like political economic empire the media it's like just created this fucking virus that just took over and just is now just blitzing the entire uh, body politic yeah he's agent smith yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, so yeah, and it's interesting because essentially Epstein was a Democrat fundraiser up until he was c- caught and convicted. So it's like, can you I, know, can I say real quick how great it is that Bill Clinton released a statement with such an obvious lie about how many times he was in the plane? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. He didn't. He didn't. It wasn't a lie. It's just very like oh, carefully it's Clinton. Baby. Yes, Clinton esque yeah, yeah. like craft work in terms of fucking like just like cutting the four trips. <laughs> right, right. So four trips could equal 24, 26 different flights. Right. Oh. Because each leg of the journey is like you got to stop, refuel, and then the plane takes off again. I mean, I don't know if they're direct flights or what, but so let's say let's say he took four trips, four times. You know, he had layovers he, in the private plane. Yeah, well, layovers. Yeah, if they have to refuel, or true, you don't want to sit on a plane for fucking eighteen, nineteen hours, they are elites. There's yeah. no reason why they shouldn't stop. Right. If, you know, we'll have we'll just spend the night in fucking Berlin or whatever, sleep in a hotel, get back on the plane, and continue the flight. So, I mean, unless you're looking at like the actual flight logs, it does sort of work out. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe that it was four trips. But that's the kind of shit that you know you can like you can go through that whole statement and just I mean it's like so carefully fucking crafted. I mean it's yeah this is the the is is motherfucker. Yeah. So it's yeah. like everything in there checks out. But I mean it's like really like a manipulation of language Did in you- a way that. Well, did you see that uh, Barack he, statement? Yeah, that was like that, well, too. Yeah, yeah. My favorite thing in the Bill Clinton thing is, like, Bill Clinton was not aware of the crimes Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> <laughs> committed in 2009. Right, right, right. So right. Not, that he was, not that he was, conv- like, convicted of. is uh, not aware of the crimes he committed in 2009. Yeah. So he picks one year. <laughs> and then says, I don't know what he did that year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's how the statement plays. But the fact that like these people are so fucking stupid that they're going to be like, oh, yeah, just lie. <laughs> right, Nobody right. gives a shit. <laughs> the people that still like Bill Clinton are going to like Bill Clinton no yeah. matter what. Yeah, yeah. He's just got that instinct. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the lawyer, the inveterate ass covering lawyer <laughs> thing. Yeah. Like yeah. at this point. No, money care. down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like, I just was Barack thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pictures that were revealed of him going into that into Epstein's house. How fucking horny do you have to be? Because <laughs> <laughs> this is worse. Two thousand. It was two thousand sixteen, right? Or was it two thousand fourteen? Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. So well after he's already got the fucking black, the, the scarlet uh, P on his jacket at all times. All right. And he's going into the house, and he knows he shouldn't be going to this fucking guy's house because he's got like a half-assed attempt to like cover his face. Uh. Like, like he's got the half the, the the thing over his mouth, and then there's and then they like got fifteen Russian, uh, you know, uh, Manchurian candidates coming in, like right, sex right, right. workers coming in, like within five minutes. And so he knows what's going to happen. He knows it's going to be revealed, but he just can't do it. He can't stop. He loves it too much. Well, and so his statement was so funny to me because I think the quote he uses is, is like, he visited him like more than 10, but less than 100 times. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> also, like, more than 10. Right. He's a fucking pedophile. <laughs> I, have, I, have been, I have been around, I will say it right now. I have been in the company of a convicted pedophile precisely zero times. Right. I don't have to give a range at all. And honestly, if you have to give a range of more than one, right. you need to explain yourself. It's like, well, you know, it could be 11. And if it's 11, what's the big deal? Now, if it was 102, we'd have to talk. But if it's 11, come on, we have an, haven't we all been there? I'll come clean and say I was a couple times, but it was in the Boy Scouts, and we didn't find out until later. <laughs> that is true. Oh, I would Jesus. like it if, if somehow it turns out through some weird network that this was all brought about by that absolute unit guy that had his picture taken. <laughs> 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 that he's like the only good actor in all of this, and he somehow set it up that day with the queen, He was, and then he gets to come back into the spotlight. Like that picture of him, like that was actually a coded, like, uh, mission go signal <laughs> to, to get it going. Mm, like yep. we're gonna bring on the network. <laughs> the absolute, <laughs> the absolute lad has signed off. But yeah, Ehud Barak said he was on the island, but there was no child orgies there at the time or of something course, like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, 
But, um, oh, yeah, so this one guy who's, I don't know how pivotal he is. I just didn't see him named in any press reports, and I thought this was interesting. So in the James Patterson book, Oren Kramer is a hedge fund guy. He started a hedge fund, Provident LP, in 1992, was an Obama fundraiser. Bill Clinton appointed him as a member of the, quote, Commission to Study Capital Budgeting. But from this James Patterson book, in 2008... Uh, or sorry, Jeffrey Epstein in the mid two thousands convinces Alan Dershowitz to invest in this guy's head fund, hedge fund, which is going fine. So this is Trump Trump tries to become one of these guys, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's done a charity called the uh, the Good Guy Fund for not <laughs> fucking children." <laughs> They're like, Donald, you can't, Donald. It's got to be more cryptic. <laughs> you can't just call. Why? It's just that we don't fuck the kids. <laughs> That's a good example because he did have a phony charity, and he used it to. Buy paintings of himself. (laughs) (laughs) The um, oh yeah, so Oren Kramer. So uh, Jeffrey Epstein convinces Alan Dershowitz to invest with this guy, and then the story from Patterson's book is 2008. Of course, the bottom falls out, so Alan Dershowitz loses all his money in this investment. Uh, The story is in 2008, Jeffrey Epstein visits Oren Kramer at his Manhattan office and told him, "quote It's very much in your interest to make Alan Dershowitz whole." Unquote. He makes Alan get Dershowitz, his foreskin back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he makes Alan Dershowitz whole. He refunds his money one hundred percent. And so it's like, why the fuck do you do that if Jeffrey Epstein visits you? Like, how else are you going to get your money back from any Wall Street guy unless they have something on you? And what I found interesting is, according to Politico, as of a week ago, Oren Kramer is a major fundraiser for Pete Buttigieg. Boom. So it's so it's it's something where it's like again Epstein was a major Democratic fundraiser and then you have that fucking tweet from Nancy Pelosi's daughter <laughs> best tweet in the world <laughs> where it's like we think some of our uh, some of our faves <laughs> are going to be caught up in this so yeah. it's like you have to imagine there will be a lot of Democratic donors who are at least named in press accounts if yeah. not actually charged with yeah. something. Yeah, and they've like I was saying before that we recorded, they are all in the room with this guy because these are a relatively small group of people who are like big money fundraisers for, especially for Democrats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're they and they have these these fundraisers where they're all together, like they're in personal proximity. They know each other's businesses. They one of the reasons they do this shit is to network with each other. Right, right. They know that this guy, even if they don't, even if they're not kid fuckers, they know that he's his whole. Uh, uh, stated uh, uh, business is bullshit, yeah. right? Because they're in the world, so they know he doesn't have a hedge fund. Because, mm-hmm. like, a cursory look at this means, oh, he doesn't have a hedge fund. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have any of the evidence of a hedge. Never fund. does anything. Has no employees. Right. Like, does nothing hedge fund related. Pub- publishes no results. Right. For, uh, right. Has no, no clients. Yeah. No patents on any algorithm. Or yeah. Like, like yeah, no, yeah. no, no evidence that he ever. Was in a circle of other hedge fund managers. Like yeah, he worked in finance in like the early '80s or something, and then his record from that time is bullshit. Apparently, right? No, the whole thing. His entire well, that was, his entire career is bullshit. Yeah. So he was a uh, college dropout who who got a job teaching uh, uh, math and physics at yeah. the Dalton School, very prestigious school in Manhattan, without qualifications. He's not qualified for that job. Yeah. While he's there, he is an open pervert. There's a whole, there was an article, I don't know if you saw this, about uh-huh. when he was at the Dalton School. You should read this shit. Yeah. He was like walking, it was in the 70s, he's walking around with like a shirt open to the navel, hit, basically hitting on the students. Yeah. You know, in a city where if you like leave fucking peanut residue on a kid's lunch, like the fucking <laughs> lunch ladies going to ADX Florence, <laughs> yeah. they're like, nobody says a word. And then one of the, and, and he got that job from Bob Barr's uh, dad. Right. Uh, and then... Uh, who is fucking OSS with Maxwell. What? I didn't yes! even know that. <laughs> yes. He was from OSS during World War II, which, al- which Jorlino Maxwell's father also was in. Mm. Uh, so he gets plucked out of there. W- once again, no qualifications to work uh, at Bear Stearns, mm. where he has... He doesn't do anything and gets, and gets, except get involved in a fucking uh, pyramid scheme or like a fucking Ponzi scheme. That was after Bear Stearns. Uh, but then he gets plucked by Les Wexman into uh, uh, staking him to a hedge fund with no published uh, clients, gives him, I mean, in the public record, gives him a mansion. That house he has in the yeah, Upper yeah, East yeah, Side, yeah, yeah. The, 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 there's no record that he paid any money for it. Right. Right. Lexer gave that to him as well as his power of attorney. Yeah. So this is a guy who has like basically been drafted through the ranks to fill a spot, 
Because you wouldn't want a guy in that job. You wouldn't want your pedo dealer in the elite world to be anybody with independent power or money of his own. Yeah. Because then the, he has a power, he has an independent uh, like power base to leverage you. If he, if you are all, if he is always, if you, always, if he is always your, you know, uh, uh, your client basically, like he's you, 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 you mm-hmm. bring him in, he's always going to be like uh, at your disposal. So then he goes to these fundraisers with this phony hedge fund that anybody in that room would have known immediately was bullshit because they're like I know these people and they never know they don't know who you are. Right, right. Like oh, I'm a bet hedge fund guy. Really bullshit. Right. Yeah, immediately yeah, yeah. they would know that, but nobody says anything and. Just out of self-preservation, you're like, I don't want a fucking Ponzi guy in here with all these fundraisers. What if, what if he blows this shit up? What if my candidate that I want to get elected gets roped in with some guy doing some financial crimes? Yeah. There would be this just an instinctive, you know, uh, the fucking immune system would kick in. And it never did, which means there was some higher level awareness of what was going on. And a, and, a, and a knowledge that, no, I mean, yeah, of course, you don't have a hedge fund, but he's cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, at a certain level, it doesn't matter because if you're any lower than that, all you need is somebody higher than you saying he's good, right. and then yeah. you're right. done. You, don't have, yeah, yeah, you never yeah. think again. All you need is somebody to vouch for him. Yeah. But at the top yeah. level, people had to vouch for him. So, I mean, that means that like, at these, at these uh, elite levels, his position in that community was known. Because he was not giving them value add through his fucking mathematical genius, right. because there's no evidence that he had any. Yeah, he's never shown any mathematical brilliance that would that would indicate this. Which, if he was, um, if he's coincidentally a huge pedophile and also a math genius, just to keep the fucking facade up, he would have done something yeah. with the math <laughs> genius right. to justify himself. And like Pat, like you said, patent an algorithm, show some sort of uh, you know real like market wisdom. Never did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never even tried. He took pictures in front of chalkboards with math equations that don't add up. Yeah. <laughs> just hangs out with guys like Pinker uh, and, and Hawking. It yeah. must it suck to just, the, just the, be a pedophile, aura. like a regular pedophile, and you're like, so that they, he, he just gets to. <laughs> 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 they pick one guy. Who right. No, that's basically he's the lottery winner. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 like if, if he had not just through pure right. you know happenstance what? It's, it's, met the it's, right people. It's so funny. It was a joke I tried to get to work when I first started stand-up. And it like the joke was funny to me because it was absurd. But like there's like that trope in movies where there's, he was the best hacker <laughs> and they arrested him. And now like we want you to work for us. Right, you right. know, and I was like, how funny it would be. I would like do it on stage. But like how funny it would be if there was like a pedophile <laughs> gets arrested. Like he was the world's best pedophile. <laughs> and like, you work for us now. That's him. You know? and That's it's, literally, it's Jeffrey literally Epstein. Right. Jeffrey right. Epstein. Because if Epstein was like slightly yeah. less social, I think and socially ingratiated. Here's, how, here's how stupid the intelligence community is too probably in the early 90s there was a guy at the cia that saw one of those hacker movies like badass <laughs> <laughs> he's like we should do that with pedophiles <laughs> we should do that with every crime but yeah if he was slightly less socially ingratiating if he hadn't by happenstance run into the right rich people in manhattan who like took a shine to him and like realized what was going on and were able to communicate to him and he was able to communicate with him, he would just be a guy in sweatpants <laughs> with a fucking ankle monitor on watching fucking disney kids yeah you know he would just be like a serial uh uh, uh, fucking uh, sex offender like in a group home. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and so we mentioned Stephen Hoffenberg. So Epstein leaves Bear Stearns. He's working with this guy in the mid 80s uh, to the late 80s. Hoffenberg in 97 pleads guilty to running a $450 million Ponzi scheme. Hoffenberg, you know, take his word as you will, but he says that Epstein was a co-conspirator in this Ponzi scheme. He says that the government just showed him favoritism and didn't charge him, which, you know, if you believe he's an intelligence agent, it makes sense. Maybe they don't charge a fucking CIA guy. Um, But so maybe that's a source of his money, but the most likely source of his money... He's a licensed pedophile. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, maybe he got to keep some of this fucking Ponzi scheme money and, and got away with it, but the most likely source of his money is Les Wexner, the Victoria's Secret guy. Yeah. You know, and so I guess I wanted to just kind of go through some biographical stuff with this guy because it's all pretty fascinating. But there's a there's an article in Bloomberg. Um, let me just see if I. Yeah, it's it's by this guy, Joe Nos, uh, Nocera. Uh, he looked at the 990s and 13Ds for the foundations and trusts that Epstein uh, and Les Wexner set up because Les, Les Wexner, the Victoria's Secret billionaire, gave Epstein like total fiduciary over all of his trusts and assets. Insane power of attorney, all this shit. So this Bloomberg article looks at it, and I, I won't go into too much detail, but essentially he finds that through these foundations, Wexner gives Epstein $250 million. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
it's <laughs> it's just something that happens where uh and then there's like another really weird transaction just look at his resume at that right. point like fucking high school teacher Worked at Bear Stearns for a while, got stitched up in a fucking Ponzi scheme. <laughs> That's his entire... There's a million traders on that fucking island, right, you right. know, who, who have actual track records and have, yeah. have more connections and have results. And this guy gets $200 million. I stand by it, man. Shkreli's the only good one. <laughs> <laughs> I said it at the time. I continue to say it until they let him out of prison. <laughs> but yeah, so it's this 13D filed in March 2002 that shows that Epstein gets this transfer in, uh, of about $250 million worth of stock and other assets. But then like another weird thing happens where Epstein had a foundation called uh, C-O-U-Q. Cuck? Yeah. Is <laughs> <laughs> um, last letter? Yeah, and so basically it had... Twenty million in assets. This uh, Epstein Foundation, all of which, all of it was from Wexner. But the thing is, right after uh, a month after Epstein gets his deal in um, Florida, he transfers forty-six million to Abigail Wexner, Les Wexner's wife. He transfers forty-six million to her foundation. Uh, Fourteen million came from Cuck or whatever. <laughs> you know, so it's like he's sending this money back, and you then know, what's interesting is she is four. <laughs> <laughs> That's another weird detail in the story. <laughs> Wexler's wife is a four-year-old girl. <laughs> but this uh, is called YLK Charitable Fund, and it makes two donations, and then it shuts down with $33 million, which again funnels back into Les Wexner's money. So it's like, why the fuck is he sending him $46 million right after he makes this guilty plea? You know, so there's just a lot of like weird questions in the financials. I really recommend that Bloomberg article. I'll, I'll link it. Um, but, you know, so apparently 250 million of his fortune comes directly from Les yeah, Wexner. You can't at least. Tr trust Bloomberg not to be obfuscating details. Oh, yeah. No, it's so funny, like watching Bloomberg News and hearing them report about Les Wexner and having to be like, so we're really sorry, Mr. Wexner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we know you're a valued customer and you've not been accused of any wrongdoing whatsoever. But we have to report that uh, he gave Les Wexner gave Epstein his 737, one of his private jets given directly to him by uh, Wexner. As we mentioned, the 77 million Manhattan mansion, they bought it together in 1989 but then he just transferred to it for zero, according to the public records. Um, and, and, you know, so... I would love it if Warren Buffett's implicated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the sickest one of them all. That would really please me if he was outed it publicly as just the, the, m the most horrific type of pedophile. Oh, because he's often seen as just down to earth, like a regular he's, Joe billionaire. I hate him. It's so <laughs> sick. His yeah. whole thing is disgusting. I yeah. fucking hate him. <laughs> it's like he honestly tells you, it's like, yeah, no, I live in the same house I bought in the 50s. Right, yeah, right. Just right. like eat McDonald's. burgers and drink, eat ice cream. Yeah. It's like, that makes you more psychotic. <laughs> yeah. That you makes you him? more psychotic. Did you see him doing anybody who just like sets fire to money yeah. in like a fucking uh, ritual uh, just he, he, conflagration? He increased his position on Delta right before all those Boeing planes started killing people. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, wow. he, uh, and then afterwards, he's like, he was running PR for Boeing. And for whatever reason, the media never fucking bats an eye. Yeah. He just gets away right. with that shit. He's like, no one is ever fucking critical of Warren Buffett. Oh, and and he, you know he's like he's like I would not hesitate to fly on a Boeing seven uh, seven thirty seven Max or whatever the fuck they are, the ones that were killing people. Yeah, right, of course. He's like I I, I I would have never hesitated to do it. And it's like well you're never going to. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like and I guarantee you they're working very hard at Boeing twenty four seven to resolve this issue. And it's like what were they doing that before the planes <laughs> killed people? He has a major share in like all the major airlines. Yeah. Like, that's part yeah. of it. They're like he's a smart investor. It's like no he's a monopolist. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, th that's the reason he's fucking going around defending Boeing. Yeah. 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 But so uh, Epstein meets Les Wexner through a guy he meets through Hoffenberg is the story. And then another weird thing about this is that nobody nobody has made Les Wexner answer when exactly he met Epstein. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, according to this Vanity Fair article, Epstein said it was 86. Others said it was 89. It's 85 at the earliest, 89 at the latest. But no, actually, by 87. 87 is when he becomes, Wexner becomes an Epstein client. Um, and, and so it is something where, like we mentioned, uh, Wexner uh, assigned him the power of fiduciary over all his private trusts and foundations. Um, but the thing is, in addition to all that, uh, he gives him the Victoria's Secret catalog, 
which is like a really fucked up part of the story where essentially like in 97, there's an allegation of Santa, Santa Monica woman says in 1997, Epstein groped her in a hotel after like bringing her there to audition for the Victoria's Secret catalog. She says she reported this to the police and it was ignored. Um, Virginia Roberts, her affidavit says Victoria's Secret models were on the flight logs uh, at least at one time with Alan Dershowitz there. <laughs> Um, and there's like this New York Post story about an Italian model named I- I- Elizabeth Ty that was just recently published. And she says she arrived in New York to do a modeling gig and her, uh, I- her booker told her that Epstein was, quote, one of the most important people in modeling. He said, this man is in charge of Victoria's Secret and he's going to change your life. So she goes to Epstein's uh, mansion and, you know, uh, like shows her photos or whatever you do. And Epstein gets down on the massage table and takes his clothes off. And she's expecting some sort of model to come in. But then he's like, no, come over, start touching me and like this kind of stuff. So she throws, I think, a vibrator at him or something and (laughs) runs out. And uh, she says as she was running out, she saw Jeslyn Maxwell, who told her she couldn't just leave. This man is very important. He's a friend of Bill Clinton's. (laughs) (laughs) But, but the point is, essentially, like, uh, and then New York Post gets, like, some uh, quotes from people involved in the modeling industry uh, saying, like, Epstein portrayed himself as the back door to get into the Victoria's Secret catalog. Um, it was still significant cash. You know, it wasn't the fashion show, but he says, you know, the, the catalog, you, you can make about 5000 a week modeling for campaigns on the catalog. And so the point is, like, this was another way that he was able to get people directly through Les Wexner's company. Yeah. No, he had. Yeah, he, he the, the 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 recruitment like mechanisms right. are pretty clear. The other one that that just I found out about a few days ago mm-hmm. uh, was we were you're talking about uh, Leon Black, this right. guy who's the only other person who is directly tied to uh, Epstein in terms of giving him money. Like, there's only two named people who we can say definitively through records provided him with money. One is Wexner and the other is Leon Black, right? Like $10 million to one of his charities and stuff. And, and he is a, a private equity guy with a very wide suite of, uh, of holdings, one of which is Academy, uh, formerly Blackwater. Right. Which... They just change their name every, like, six Yeah, they were yeah. G yeah. for a like, while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which was no. the weirdest one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah X-I. Yeah. Uh, just, like, uh, just make it stupid. Make it hard to pronounce. <laughs> uh, and... Blackwater has been wildly implicated in yeah. human trafficking uh, in right. everywhere that they've been put. Like accusations of literally just like bringing people, young women, into these like uh, the the compounds and stuff and trafficking them around from Afghanistan, the Middle East. Talking about the fucking Syrian uh, bathhouse. Yeah, I, I mean, like yeah, like just from what we see from his public disclosures, the people he's connected to, the 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 uh, entities he's connected to, have the infrastructure to just be conveyor belts right. for, for right. victims, basically. Right, yeah, like for Leon Black, uh, according to the New York Post, in 2015, Black threw a lavish pool party at his Hampstons estates. Uh, a source there said Jeffrey Epstein was there, <laughs> along with a number of women in bathing suits. And this is 2015. Like, Jeez. this is long after the allegations are very well known. Uh, he says uh, in the New York Times it was reported that Mr. Epstein was an inventor, investor in environmental solutions world bo- worldwide, a maker of emission control products uh, with several people close to Leon Black, including his four children. Um, and then, of course, in 2015, Epstein has this charity that you know has been reported on by the Daily Beast. The only known cash it got was $10 million from Leon Black. Right. So it's like, how does why is this private equity guy giving him ten million dollars? You know, um, and then I guess just one other thing on that Victoria's Secret from the the New York Post, they quote some other agent who says uh, the uh, Victoria. Essentially, sh- this other agent says Jislyn Maxwell was a fixture at Victoria's Secret events. Uh, and they say, quote, they were always these really trashy shows full of rich men in the audience. Jislyn acted as the kind of Nazi guard telling everyone where they were sitting in the audience and that she had new, quote, pop tarts, which is what she called the young models. <laughs> oh God. So it's like everything indicates that Jislyn Maxwell was a the high society pimp for yeah. Epstein, among other people. So you guys, obviously, you've seen that picture that's floating around, uh, the, the Getty image. Is that real? Yeah. Of her at the Chelsea wedding? No, no, no. That I know about. It's this other image that I saw some uh, QAnon idiot post. And then I was like, okay, this is too on the nose. And then I looked for it. 
and and it looks like it is an actual like Getty image that you can like buy from their catalog, right. and that is not like I I posted it when I first saw it, and because I was even at the time I was like this might not be real, and uh, and then of course somebody immediately was like oh yeah that's not a real Getty image and uh, that's <laughs> photoshopped, but then after that somebody linked the actual Getty image like. Link? The, 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 the link on the website mm-hmm. where you could buy the print for $500. You guys know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know. What is this photo? Okay. So this was, there's this guy, uh, he's got a whole thing. He's a society photographer, Patrick sure. McManson or something. Uh, and he's got tons of images on Getty of, of high society events. Right. Uh, and one of them was uh, for a party uh, that Gislin Maxwell was at, uh, uh, at her home in 2007. In New York, uh, this guy Patrick McMullen, uh, and it was commemorating uh, like somebody's stupid like bistro or, or some <laughs> bullshit. But this is the picture that was uh, posted. <laughs> I don't know who the guy is, but that's oh what? Wait, and what, where is she in that? What she's the she's fuck? she's at the, she she's was the there, but she's that's not in the image. It's hard to describe, but that's like a guy with a it's, standing it's, a below him, like a mask. It's a mask of what looks like the devil with yeah. a giant rope right. beard. But then the real thing that fucked with me, and somebody insisted this was photoshopped, and I was like, you know what, it probably is. This is too on the nose. But then they, I saw the fucking Getty image, uh, you know, clickable link. Right, right. right. Like they didn't. Nobody photoshopped that. Look at the forehead of the skull. Oh, that's like what a pentagram. No, it's not. A pentagram would be kind of explicable. Well, it's a ghost from Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hard to see, but uh, in the corner there. Is it one of those symbols yeah. from Twin Peaks? What is that? It's a triangle. But oh, like Illuminati triangle? Some, no, like the fucking, like the fucking yeah. Nambla triangle. Oh, the whole thing that started right, Pizzagate. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to see because it's dark. But it's an actual... It like it looks like that Im- exactly like that image from the FBI thing that they're always posting on 4chan right, right. of of you know like what the s- the symbols are. Mm-hmm. The downfall of elite societies was in- inviting Getty images photographers. <laughs> but no, like I saw that and like I still don't know if it's real. And I just keep thinking, if I just stop, if I don't stop looking at this, I'm going to go insane. Right. 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 Like there's no because there's no yeah. way to like I'll never be able to know what I'm sure, looking at. Right. I'll never be able to know what's true. There's zero chance. Right. I'm so far removed from it. I'm only getting this, you know, I'm trying to like grab, trying to drink from the fire hose of just <laughs> internet <laughs> fucking data. I'm, I'm, and I'm just going to be like putting pieces together as right. like I see them, which is just a recipe for schizophrenia. Have you read the descriptions of the art in his New York mansion? Oh, I know about the painting of him in jail. Is there other? Oh, right, and the dentist chair in the bathroom, and yeah. like eyeball, uh, just a wall of like eyeballs. Jesus Christ! Wait, the dentist chair in the bathroom? Yeah, he's got like an old timey dentist chair in the bathroom. It looks like something from Saw. I yeah, saw the right, picture right. of it. It's it's like no, that's dis- it's like no one on earth would see that and be like, oh, that's a nice little touch. That's a cute. That's a, did you get that a fucking crate and barrel? <laughs> he has a bunch of art that's not like particularly highly valued given his wealth. Hmm. Like the, well, the eyeball one, for instance. That's yeah. just because well, he loves uh, it. Yeah, yeah I mean, fucking Tony Podesta's art collection is bizarre. Yeah. But the, see, that's the other thing. It's like when the P- Pizzagate thing broke, I remember reading about the art and being like, yes, this is, this is weird, but I could totally see this as just being like a pretentious guy. Yeah. Sure. Like wanting to be edgy. Yeah. You know, like specifically the thing of like the Dahmer body. Like he has this like coffee table that's in a model of a crime scene photo of one of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims. Hmm. And it's like, that's gross. But also you could totally see him at a party like explaining it right, to people. Right, to look right. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like this fucking old lame-o. At a pizza party, which they seem to have <laughs> all the time. <laughs> they love to have All pizza. the time. Even they after the pizza. Pizzagate thing. It's like, how much do you fucking love pizza? <laughs> <laughs> that you're like, hey, remember that thing that was probably traumatic for us? And somebody fucking brought a gun and fired it at our friend's <laughs> right. pizza restaurant? Let's continue to have pizza parties all the time. <laughs> They're still doing it. We love pizza, folks. Switch the fucking <laughs> sandwich. I don't give a shit. Meatball parm. There's no reason the fuck. You can afford it. Just have pasta. It's a get together. I mean, fuck. Like, I mean, wh- well, that, it goes back to the temple thing. Either 
it's like we're committed to this. It's yeah. part of our dark rituals. <laughs> or we're going to have fun with it. This is what they think we do. We're right. going to lean into it. Triangle slices. Funny? Like wink, winking at each other. You know, just, oh, we're just so... We're just so fucking clever. Or it's a mixture of the two. You right. Know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure they want to get, like, information out there to distract people. Like, we were talking about before this started, Epstein was a member of the Trilateral Commission, which, For like... For a an, long time. Another, like, conspiracy theory you want to go on is, like, people think the Trilateral Commission did 9-11 and shit. Yeah. You know, so it's like he was in the Trilateral co- commi- Commission, Council on Foreign Relations, New York Academy of Sciences. Like, these are the kind of... Like, the, like I, it comes back to just... Out of self-preservation, he's getting in rooms with incredibly powerful people mm-hmm. who are going to know want to know what they're dealing with. And his entire presentation of himself was fraudulent on its face. Oh, yeah. And that never stopped him from getting into any of these rooms, which means that there had to have been at some level and high enough that you could just vouch for him to people lower than you awareness of what his role was. So, like, with the theory that you posed earlier about, like, there's someone above him that's helping him move along. Yeah. With him getting arrested now, is his value, like, no longer useful? Or is it just he's run his course of what that career was supposed to be? Well, I think, yeah, it, I think it's that limited hangout thing of, uh, honestly, I bet that his, uh, he, he probably became less of a, he probably <laughs> lost his uh, position as a, actual like organizer or whatever we're talking about right, after right. he got convicted because you know it's yeah. just too much but he didn't lose his social position because that's how you guarantee him not you know releasing the dead man switch and mm-hmm. releasing all the information and burning everybody right but uh i think like after that conviction you have this awareness of like well we can't use him anymore mm-hmm. so whatever other networks are existing we have to you know activate them basically build up a, a somebody to take his spot and then just be, and then at the same time, like I was saying, cut the connections, create plausible deniability around everybody who's too powerful to go down, so that if, because of, you know, like something like the Miami Herald or the Voice lawsuit, he gets enough public uh, scrutiny that eventually they just gotta go after him again just to get ahead, you know, to, yeah. to give to the public, it's not gonna blow back on their face. And that he's just like, you know, it's like cut, it's like how they fucking remove a, a they uh, castrate a bull or something by just like tying a rubber band around the mm, balls until they, sure, just, sure, yeah. until they just lose the, the blood <laughs> right, and right. then they just fall off. Egg-shaped penis yeah. again. Yeah, you just tie, <laughs> tie a rubber band around the egg-shaped penis until it, it <laughs> loses blood supply and falls off. And that's like, yeah, what's he going to say? At this point, he doesn't have the goods anymore to fuck anybody other than people who are expendable, like Dershowitz. <laughs> Dershowitz goes down, nobody's going right, to fucking right. lose any sleep. Oh, he's so guilty now. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. It's like, I have very little hope that anybody really ha- like the Clintons, that would be amazing, but it's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, Dershowitz, well, nothing will happen. Dershowitz, I don't know. Dershowitz might go down. I mean, I, I could we, see that. We still have to see if Epstein even goes down, right? You know, yeah. I mean, I it, guess it's just it's such so public, you know. And they denied so, him bail. Yeah, but there's a lot of things. That, like, like, I mean, like, the, you know, the, like, if you can protect a fucking Eric Garner cop, you can protect <laughs> fucking <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, but he's also like one million times more implicated than. And worse than Weinstein, and like Weinstein went down. So. Yeah, but I, I mean, Weinstein's just like a lecherous guy. Mm-hmm. I don't like it's not like this guy was already protected to like a, a like a horrific degree in fucking two thousand six. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I don't know. I mean, we'll see. You know, I don't know if he goes down. I like how Mossad operatives get like post retirement sinecures, like harassing women <laughs> who are <laughs> rape victims. Kevin Spacey didn't. And that's clearly a case right. of like fucking witness intimidation or whatever. Oh yeah, well that then, see that's the other thing of thinking like I'm gonna go insane because out of nowhere his 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 accuser just pleads the fifth. <laughs> right. oh, <laughs> out yeah. of nowhere, right. yeah, just like yeah, like happened to that Gallagher guy. Same, basically the same thing with that seal, the maniac seal who mm-hmm. who, who killed the civilian in Iraq. The guy, the, one of the main witnesses who had immunity, just on the stand says, "Oh, I killed the kid. It yeah. wasn't him," and he gets off. This guy who was incredibly high profile, uh, uh, a guy who uh, was really loved by the higher ups and special forces. And of course, Trump is literally publicly said yeah, I, right, I, right. Like, the, the, the pressure is obvious. It's a similar situation. And then I think about the people saying, remember that video that Spacey made? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that insane. Yeah. You can't <laughs> wait. What is he thinking? And at the time it got written off as, yeah, this is just a maniac right, actor right. who's like totally narcissistic and doesn't realize how this looks. But people say. 
No, he was like warning, warning them, the elite, that he can't go down. Yeah. And then bam, bam, fucking bam. His, yeah. his accuser <laughs> just says, ah, no, I, 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 I'm not going to crucify. You know what uh, blew my mind doing research for this? As of a day ago, the guy making the Jeffrey Epstein documentary decided not to make it anymore <laughs> because he said it was, quote, too distasteful. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like the documentary of the century, right, and right. he's just right in the middle of all this shit, yeah. backing out. It's like, what the fuck did he find out? Yeah, that's it, so weird. And and, and as part of that, the, the spacey thing, someone pointed out, and this is another thing. I just gonna, I might as well just drill a hole in my head like the guy in Pie. <laughs> <laughs> is that he, he? There's a mug that Spacey's drinking from in yeah. that, mm-hmm. and it's and it's a it's a mug with like I think the signature of Queen Elizabeth. Of oh, course. Really? <laughs> It's like it's like a it's like a uh, it's like a commemorative mug right, right, for right. some fucking jubilee or something, <laughs> and of course you know one of the top people yeah. implicated in that Ep- Epstein network that he was involved with was Prince Andrew, mm-hmm. and it's like, I mean it's like that sounds dumb, but then he just gets off right out right. of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. There are like thirty different like commemorative or like heirloom shit in the back of yeah. him. Oh yeah. As yeah. He, as he made the video. Yeah. Before we wrap up here, I did want to mention one more thing about Les Wexner. Just something I found, and uh, you, if you're interested in Les Wexner, I would recommend you look at some of the stuff by this journalist, Bob Fitrakis. He was a, a, a independent Columbia, uh, Columbus, Ohio journalist. He wrote for this paper, Columbus Alive. But the point is, um, he explored this confidential police report that essentially accused Les Wexner of being mobbed up, at least in the 80s, Mm. or associated with the mob. And the story is that Arthur Shapiro was a lawyer uh, shot twice in the head in 1985, killed a mob-style killing. And uh, just according to this confidential police report written in about 1991, uh, at the time he was part of a Columbus law firm that represented The Limited, which is, of course, he, uh, Les Wexner's brand, The Limited, uh, now L Brands, owns Victoria's Secret. But so he was working the Les Wexner account, and it just so happens that he was the subject of an IRS investigation, and uh, his death occurred one day prior to, sh- to his appearance before a grand jury in the IRS case. Mm. And so the reason that people kind of link Les Wexner to the mob is that because uh, there are these two people, um, a guy named Walsh, uh, a Youngstown real estate developer, Edward uh, D. Bartolo, and uh, a trucker named Walsh, uh, were both connected, according to the report, to the Pittsburgh family, the Genovese LaRocca crime family. And so it was essentially where, like, uh, n- uh, according to one thing this journalist found, uh, uh, Francis J. Walsh is the guy's name. He owned the R- Walsh Trucking Company. And around the time of the murder, according to an interview that he found, Walsh did in excess of 90% of the Limited's trucking business during that time. And uh, then, you know, of course, this other guy, um, Les Wexner, was in some various uh, De Bartolo. He was in a couple um, takeover bids in, the, in, like, 84 and um, 86, he was involved in, like, multi-billion dollar takeover bids. They tried to take over Neiman Marcus at one point. Hmm. So it's like, clearly, Wexner at least knows these two mobbed-up guys. I don't know if he actually murdered that lawyer, but it's just something to to be aware of where, and this gets, like, no press whatsoever, but we'll see if maybe the Epstein connection has people look into this a little more. Well, I mean, yeah, if, if, if Wexner is just able to just hang out like in his dialysis tent or whatever the fuck he's <laughs> in at this point, I don't. He's pretty old, uh, and not get dragged in here. Then you know that yeah, there's no chance at anything greater because th- th- he is the f- public exhibit one of anybody who would be involved. This is the, the this is the mug that he was drinking out of, <laughs> that Spacey was drinking out of, uh, and I'll read you guys the quote. Uh, it's a commemorative yeah, mug, yeah, yeah. and it's and it's 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 got the 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 clown jewels on it. Uh, Westminster Abbey. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a commemorating her uh, coronation, I think. Or yeah, uh, Westminster Abbey, second June, nineteen fifty three, and it has a nice gold leaf uh, calligraphy quote from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Quote: Throughout all my life and with all my heart, I shall strive to be worthy of your trust. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. It is something where, like, I think we were talking about this before we started recording, where essentially, like, the Matt, you've talked about this, and I know Chomsky has talked about this, too, where conspiracy theory thinking, the idea is that people understand inherently that their life is bad, but they don't understand the mechanisms through right. which, you know, private equity or whatever else destroys union companies. or So you essentially, instead of, like, 
understanding this, you say, oh, they're all pedophiles. That's why the elite are bad. And then you just start like running into this shit where more and more evidence comes out that, you know, am I insane? Is this real? Is am am I just going down the rabbit hole? Like, yeah. See, the thing is, is my life isn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and to, the, to the extent that I even give a shit is like, if you were like, yeah, Bill Clinton and Alan Dershowitz, all of them are in a weird yeah, right, pedophile right. cult together. I'd be like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's just I wouldn't fucked fucking up. really give a shit beyond that. <laughs> I'd just be like, that's, I don't know. That's weird that that's happening. Right. You know, and like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't even be like, there should be a call for just, like, the country, like, Things are already fucked up. Like, the Iraq war is fucked up. Yeah. There's so many things that are already fucked up that, like, a weird pedophile cult on top of it wouldn't bother me any more than I've already, like, had to make peace with the fact that, like, yeah, I'm yeah. sort of complicit in the shitty system. Right. Like, in 08, like, the entire economy was recapitalized on the back of fucking taxpayers to make whole the people who destroyed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. In front of everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone said, this sucks. We don't want to do this. Yeah. And all the politicians are like, yeah, this is bullshit, huh? Well, we got to do it. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you, 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 I don't want that to happen. It's like, yeah. well, good luck, motherfucker. Who are you going right, to vote right, for? Who right. doesn't want to do I mean, this? Climate change is the best example. It's like, we're all just going to die. China is like fucking like... Pedal to the metal, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking be legend. You know, and it's like, we're all just going to burn to death in 50 years. And it's like, all right, whatever. Yeah. You know, we'll see what comes out on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I think the explanatory model is when uh, uh, Nick, was, Nick and I were talking before the show about, yeah, there are some guys who, like Epstein, are like, you know what? My real heart is in pedophilia. Mm -hmm. That's my whole, like, if, <laughs> if I could make a, like, they, they got pedophile when they took the career aptitude test in high school. <laughs> right, right. And he just made good. You know, he was the best pedophile and he got to do his, I got, you know what? I have it, not a day of it has felt like worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for a lot of these guys at the top, it's like a thing you got to do to just stay in the club. It's right, like, oh, right. God, I got to fuck a kid again, I guess. <laughs> God damn it. I just want to go yeah. watch the ball game. It's like an but Eastern promises when the gay brother makes or the gay son makes him. Uh, yeah. Have sex with the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. like this is how at the very, very right. top, like these bonds are sealed. And you just have to have this mutual implication, this mutual sense of each other's limits or lack thereof. Uh, mutual uh, a sense that nobody is 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 outside. This is the way like. A, it's 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 the way like concentrated and power operates throughout the entire like spectrum of power down to like precincts and, and like dirty cops yeah. like who like the guy who won't take money right, is right. a problem. I didn't know yeah. you get wet, Jake. <laughs> 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 it's training day. Yeah. yeah, training to be a pedophile. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I want to mention. So wait, that uh, that article that came out where those. BMW billionaire heirs said that our life is actually much harder than you think it is <laughs> because they have to yeah, they they have do all that kind of yeah. stuff. I don't, I got to think of like a fucking Bugatti when I they got to come up with a new BMW. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't mention this yet, but essentially like, uh, well, Epstein was supposedly in jail. He was visited by women and all the records disappeared, you mm -hmm. know, and now the Palm beach PD is like supposedly investigating themselves about this, but the sheriff who ordered his work release is still in charge right. and overseeing right. the investigation. But the, the work release where he was just getting women. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The you whole know, time. He was like Escobar killing somebody in jail. <laughs> yeah. You know, totally unaccountable. I mean, there's like 130,000 disappeared and stuff. Yeah. The corruption is like so funny too. Cause I mean, the, the smaller thing is hilarious because it's like how bad woke people are. At being <laughs> right, corrupt. right. 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 <laughs> like to, just how bad that fucking DA yeah. fucked up, like sneakily letting her friend off. Right. So you think about like how good pedophiles mm -hmm. are in, in, in contrast to that, I mean, yeah, even like born the, into it. They, yeah, they, they the low level pedophiles are like wife, kids, you know, fucking eighty thousand dollar a year job, right? You know, white picket fence, no one will know, <laughs> and they get away with it. So yeah. imagine if you're like an elite pedophile, like that's how you go three decades, nobody finding out. But so CNBC actually looked at uh, the jail records that do exist, and they found another Bill Clinton connection. This guy Arnold Paul Prosperi was uh, visited Epstein in prison more than at least 20 times. Uh, he was an attorney who uh, became friends with Clinton at Georgetown University, uh, and he later became a fundraiser for Bill Clinton, and Bill Clinton, uh, he uh, commuted, uh, this Bill Clinton commuted his sentence for filing false tax returns on his last day in the White House in 2001. That little Mark Rich action there. Right. <laughs> so it's just something where it's like, this guy who's probably conceivably linked to Bill Clinton visited Epstein at least 20 times while he was in jail. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, we'll see what else comes out. 
Yeah, just it's like that scene in Boogie Nights when uh, Jack goes to visit the Colonel. Mm-hmm. Only it's just they're all having fun. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine just being his cellmate. <laughs> like, well, I'm in here for uh, siphoning gas. <laughs> <laughs> Out of a police cruiser. <laughs> How about you? I really don't want to say. I like to imagine he sounds like Christopher Lambert. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, he was on the plane. That drove me insane. Speaking of, okay, so. Did you know he's blind? Did we yeah, talk about Yeah, we talked that? about the blindness. Uh, it's just hilarious. Just the. Like that guy, he has to be have month, something on someone because how did he become an actor? Just yeah. no right. talent, <laughs> blind man who can't speak English, can't and speak has English, like, like Pee Wee Herman body, <laughs> yeah. fucking action star. He had to have had tapes on people. Yeah, yeah. But talking one more about brain about the brain, you know, uh, hole. The, the the brain hole worm thing is. So you guys, I was listening to the episode where you just brilliantly out of thin air conjured a narrative of jimmy buffett yeah right which and after <laughs> after the fact we googled jimmy buffett and of course he's implicated he's in there <laughs> that's the thing yeah, yeah. like i'm listening to this and it's like it starts off as a joke it's very funny but then you read the lyrics yeah. to cheeseburger paradise <laughs> yeah. and you're like Sacri- well, sacrifice <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, it's a fucking burger what are you yeah. talking about <laughs> right and then it's like well that's still it's like a little funny but it's a little weird and then yeah. yo no he's in there right yeah right. she's it's like all right yeah i'm just gonna dip my brain in fucking battery yeah, yeah right yeah no it's it's very easy to go down that road and then yeah you know fucking eyes wide shut man yeah, yeah. it's all right there yeah yeah, like, so Courtney Love has her name circled in Epstein's mm-hmm. Black Book, and her boyfriend and money manager around the time was a guy named Dano Ghiacciato or something, uh, but the, Dana, but the important thing is he was one of the investors in um, Digital Entertainment Network, yeah. which was, of course, Brian Singer's, like, you know, rape children, fake yeah. company. So it's like, I, I don't know. There's just so many weird connections that you could go absolutely insane trying to follow all of these. Oh, that's why she had Kurt killed. He was going to blow the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining some like Israeli guy in Seattle, like, oh, I've got the kill. The, the, <laughs> uh, the coffee's pretty good. <laughs> I was looking forward to the fourth album, but. <laughs> but um, I guess just to wrap it out here. Um, so supposedly Gislin Maxwell, her lawyers say that she's living in London, but she doesn't have a permanent address <laughs> so you know she's Been like there. clearly uh trying to avoid interpol warrants at the moment <laughs> but she her lawyers filed some sort of thing to um those 2000 pages of the virginia roberts documents where they accuse uh, maxwell as well as other people like dershowitz uh, uh the second appeals court has ruled them to be um uh, uh, unsealed, thanks to the hard work of Mike Cernovich. And uh, the the point here was, essentially, she's filed, as of last week, to have the full panel rehear it. Mm-hmm. There's supposed to be some hearing, I think, Wednesday, July 25th, which it might come out then, it might come out after then, but within the next couple weeks, conceivably, these 2,000 pages are going to come out, and we just have to speculate uh, who might be in it. And I guess just to Nick and Matt, if you have any predictions or uh, final thoughts on things we might not have covered Let's here. see John Voigt. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald McDonald. I think it's, it's easier to pick people you don't think are going to be. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Mark Ruffalo is probably fine. Yeah. Oh, God, that would be disappointing. Um, Tom <laughs> Hanks is a pedophile for sure. <laughs> uh, no, anyone in the Amblin arc, anybody yeah. who's been in more than one Spielberg movie, right. yeah. I think you could just right. assume. Right. Yeah. What if um, what if the documents come out? Spike, and Spike Jones and Charlie Kaufman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you who one hundred percent not Michael Bay. Michael Bay of course. zero. Yeah, yeah, well, zero Mike, Michael Bay is part of that. That I feel like Bruckheimer, Simpson, and Bay are part of that crew of guys that are just like stupid. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, <laughs> like their idea of becoming a powerful guy in Hollywood is like making a hot girl wash a car. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like that's it. And then you're like, no, but we could like yeah. go in the next room and there's like a bunch of kids and rubs like, what? No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking weird, dude. He's <laughs> <laughs> fucking Megan Fox in a bikini. Yeah. What the fuck do you want? Like I think Tony Scott uh, uh, is like legitimately the only guy to actually kill himself in Hollywood. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's like, all of my friends are dumb as shit. <laughs> all, all my garbage movies <laughs> <laughs> i can't do it again i can't do it uh i was thinking it'd be good if the 2000 pages come out and uh bernie's fundraising disadvantage totally disappears overnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah did you see that article where it was uh kamala harris uh right. what was it she she slammed uh the the law firm that defended epstein and then immediately after that took money from it yep <laughs> 
Yeah, no, she took money from the ups, the law firm that uh, negotiated the plea deal. Oh, and yeah. Her, her uh, defense was like, oh, it wasn't the same lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Swish. Oh, and then from the Vanity Fair, a few years ago, Epstein was a guest at a dinner in Palo Alto, hosted by LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman. Uh, at the dinner, Elon Musk introduced Mark Z- him to Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> wow. Uh, and, of course, there's the picture of Gislin Maxwell with uh, Elon Musk, with Lloyd Blankfein in 2013, with Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, there's no so concern here. I mean, <laughs> um, what? Uh, Elon Musk just revealed that he made some sort of, like, Jeffrey Dahmer machine <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, human yeah, brain. Yeah, yeah. Neuralink. Just drilling holes yeah. in people's skulls. <laughs> that there's nothing to be concerned with there. I, I love when he does this shit. And he's like, I need volunteers now. Like that's how he's introducing it to people. Well, We're that's so, that's the thing about him is that he's got this army of people who have deluded themselves into yeah, thinking that he's like fucking. Yeah. You know, he's like Thomas Edison times. That's the crazy. Is, is Elon Musk has been able to pull the trick that all the tech guys mm-hmm. did in the fucking seventies and eighties. And then it really ramped up in the 90s where it's like, these guys are the smart kid geniuses that are going to save fucking capitalism because computers can't make pollution. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the only problem with business is pollution. But Meanwhile, just, he's, he makes rockets. Yeah, and he's just... <laughs> I mean, it's like the, the, the shittiest type of engine yeah. there is. Right. And like, what if we, what if we, what if we dealt with uh, uh, public transportation issues by just drilling an endless series of tunnels <laughs> to the center of the earth uh. for individual cars to right, go down? Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, th- but because of these people who have deluded themselves into thinking that he would not need to uh, get kids or anything like that, they, they would do it. They would be like the fucking children's crusade. They'd just be like coming in <laughs> in an army to be like, yes, drill holes in my head. Right. Turn me into a fuck puppet. As long as, you, as long as I wake up on Mars, I don't care what you do. All right. Well, is there anything we didn't get to here? I mean, there's tons, but yeah, yeah. There's I, a I don't want to yeah, it's, wanna it's like mind. it's Yeah, it really is. It, the limits of this whole operation and the extent of it challenge your like conscious understanding of the world around you <laughs> <laughs> to a degree that it's like trying to like, you know, yeah, comprehend like a metaphysical question about like <laughs> the nature of existence itself. So <laughs> it, it's like you can't even really go that far with it. You're like, oh, I guess, yeah, everyone's involved <laughs> and I'll never know exactly why right. or how we got here or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it'll, it'll just put you in the fucking hospital. Well, like, you were talking about that Michael Jackson documentary and, like, you know, what some of Michael Jackson's employees would, like, move the parents mm-hmm. of the children of being abused when they went on tour. They would move them to farther away hotel rooms. Yeah. So it's like you have all these, like, little functionaries in an operation like this. Yeah. And you just imagine how many people who were even, like, not directly abusing kids just... My, my th- red pill was Subway Jared. I've said <laughs> it before, but it's, like, the amount of people that had to have been protecting that, that fucking... Right. Yeah. That guy who is does not come... <laughs> <laughs> from, he was famous by accident. He was a big fat guy <laughs> that had to tell the sandwich company. Right, that right, lost right. It. He has no friends in his life to be like, good job. He's like, I guess I'll write a letter to Subway to let them know I'm not a fat piece of shit anymore. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we'll put you in a couple commercials because we feel bad for you. He right. rises to the top ranks of Subway. And then now people have to protect this fat pedophile. And it's like, Why? He's not an elite. He has no connection to anything. He's just just the fucking subway guy, and you could get, replace him in a second. And honestly, they should have years ago. Right. It's a shitty ad campaign. No one remembers that he was <laughs> fat. It's just some fucking weird dork <laughs> that's like, these sandwiches are pretty good. <laughs> There's no, zero fucking reason to have him around. And for years, people are just like protecting him. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Were, they were telling people every subway he would go to, they'd be like, yeah, he was trying to grab the asses of all of our underage <laughs> And they would be like, "Yeah, don't worry about it. He's he's Jesus. getting help." Like just these, these executives, like we can't let we yeah. cannot lose Subway Jared. Now imagine, now imagine that's the fucking king of <laughs> of some shitty nation. Yeah, it's like the Sultan of yeah. Brunei. Yeah, it's the fucking yeah Prince of Wales. Yeah, yeah. That's why they're fighting universal health care. It's because like all those functionaries just have like amazing health plans, <laughs> and they lose yeah. that. It's like yeah, if we can't if we can't like uh, dangle dental over people's heads, we're not <laughs> our sex slaves around the country. Um, but I guess uh, obviously we'll see what happens if, with these two thousand pages. Supposedly, maybe they'll come out next week, maybe the, the week after. Uh, we'll see who, if anybody's implicated in them. We'll see what happens with the Epstein trial. Um, 
I'm sure you can keep track of uh, what Matt and Nick say on uh, Matt on Chapo Trap House, Nick on Come Town, uh, two of my absolute favorite people to listen to. Uh, anything else to advertise or say while you're here? Yeah, I'm selling shirts. <laughs> this is my, my business now. I'm selling shirts out of the back of the truck. It's uh, come.town. Uh, I'm going to be parachuting uh, into Interlochen to find uh, Epstein's private chalet that he uh, was keeping there for many years, apparently, so that he could play piano. <laughs> Speaking of things we didn't get into, yeah. Oh yeah. That's oh yeah. It. He's a piano player. Oh yeah. Well, he needed that temple to yeah. just. The extra <laughs> <money>. <laughs> it's just fucking just bullshit. Just be like, I'm sorry. Pizzagate is real. You were right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just I, I love the pretension of of this guy. Like he's he's got you know, the career. He's 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 doing what he loves, being the pedophile man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's also got to pretend to be a genius. He's got to pretend to be a piano prodigy. Yeah. I'm just imagining he's at one of these parties. Everybody's getting ready to go into the back room. They've got the adrenochrome uh, appetizers. <laughs> and then he just sits down at this like $50,000 piano to yeah. like serenade them. And he just plays chopsticks. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and they're just like nodding their head like, very good, Jeff. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and so well, they're like, oh well, he is a classically trained <laughs> pianist, <laughs> and it's like, well, let's who who would you say is the best living pianist right now? I don't know. Okay, there's Martha Agarich Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so let's see if she what uh, where does she fucking practice piano? <laughs> <laughs> and she's the she's one of the best, right, right? Yeah, the best in the fucking world. Does she have an island she goes to? <laughs> And then, and even there, she has to go to the southernmost point to go into a weird fucking right, Egyptian right. temple. <laughs> Maybe it was like the Eyes Wide Shut thing where they picked Epstein because they needed a piano player yeah. who wouldn't look out <laughs> behind <laughs> the <laughs> blindfold <laughs> and tell Tom Cruise where the party is. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I guess any other question for our guest? Uh, thank, thank you both so yeah, much for being so here. Yeah, so thank you. funny, so interesting. You yeah, know, I mean, we'll, we'll see what, what happens. But we will. This shit's making or me crazy. Or to, yeah. Oh, I did. I emailed Chomsky just to see what he what he thought. Yeah, Please let me know uh, when he gets back to you if he does. Because yeah. I'd be very interested. To so see I did what email has Professor to say. Chomsky with the recent arrest of Jeffrey Epstein and media reports suggesting a wide ranging conspiracy. Do you personally believe that there are elite networks of pedophiles at the highest level of government and business in this country? Thank you for all your work. So I'll let you know if he thinks it's real or yeah, not. Yeah. Please let me know. Yeah. What if he just stridently I'll denies be, it? I would be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> that would be re- that would be really upsetting. If Chomsky said no, and then yeah, you just yeah. had to like jettison all this stuff from your mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't, don't know. What do you jettison? <laughs> I guess I'll get rid. Of, I guess I get really into daily fantasy now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess I can shake hands with Elon Musk again. <laughs> yeah. right, right. He seems like a trustworthy character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did what? you see that with Andy? Is it Nyo? Oh, the guy who got oh, yeah. punched? Yeah, 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 yeah. He did Rogan, and he's, like, affecting Elon Musk's accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I saw that, yeah. <laughs> just, he's like, I want to have as good of an interview as Elon Musk did. <laughs> I guess I'll just talk <laughs> like right, him. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the brain hemorrhage. Yeah, he's like, yeah, they uh, they concussed my my, my, brain, my brain was ha- hemorrhage. Right. <laughs> And uh, that's why I talk like this. It now. really, uh, it really uh, had a ne- negative uh, e- effect <laughs> on my brain. <laughs> and he's from Portland, Oregon. He yeah. sounds like us. He's from oh, the right, Pacific yeah, Northwest. It doesn't yeah, have any fucking accent. Just being weird. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, um, Nick Mullen from Come Town, uh, Matt Chrisman from Chapo Trap House. Thank you both for being here. And uh, and with that, this one, Grudge Stickers. I'm Yogi Pollywall. Steve Jeffers. Andy Palmer. I'm Sean McCarthy. Thanks for listening, and uh, thanks to our guests. This was a lot of fun. And uh, if you like us, check us out, Patreon Grubstakers. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.